Have you ever wondered how to build mega builds? And I mean, really bailed mega builds? Well, I have over 37,000 days in my hardcore world and I'm fitting to show you guys exactly that process. Now there's quite a bit to it when it comes down to mega builds and I'm gonna try to break it down as much as I possibly can for you guys in this series, where I'm gonna show you guys the process of how I build all the mega builds in my world. One of them being focal points. What do you want your focal point to be? Does it have a story? Does it have a theme? And can you work around that? Another major thing that you guys need to consider is location. Where do you want to locate a build in your world? And how do you want it to basically present itself? But to go a little bit off of location, let me show you guys a little bit something else. Regions can equally be as important as locations. Obviously, you want to build up different regions of your world with different themes behind them. This is my Skulk land. So we have ourselves some castles here with the Skulk all on the ground with bone dragons and a factory here that's a little bit more dystopian style. But most of you guys are probably wondering how to get all the resources to build up these mega projects. Well, I like the snowball method. What's the snowball method, you ask? Well, the snowball method, since I don't AFK, it's a little bit more complicated. It means that I had to plan out my builds weeks out from the actual build. That means that I have to start slowly accumulating resources a couple weeks away from a build. Now, of course, we all have our farms and everything like that that are going to give us resources. But another major thing that I like to utilize are villagers. Currently right now, I don't know if I have anything in here. I am currently smelting up smooth quartz and I'll show you guys exactly why later in today's episode. But with all that out the way, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I go about building up major builds. All of them start off with beacons, which could take me upwards to five hours to set up. And not on only that, but there's a lot of line work ahead of us as well. But I want to show you guys a little bit of that process. These episodes will get better over time. So bear with me. If you guys like the episode, please leave a like. If you guys want to see some more, consider subscribing. But let's get into it. Now you guys can see I got a little bit of the bridge and the front facade now fully done and mapped out. So I have a little bit of direction I'll go in. Now I will say I definitely prefer building like this because it gives me a little bit more of a sense of scale and size. So I can kind of work out the builds a little bit better, uh, which is nice. And then you'll notice on the side here, I'm kind of working out a little bit of the angles and then working my way over towards the tower. Now that I have the shape of my towers, I'm going to start working out a little bit of the palette here. So I'm trying to go with more of like a blue and gold look because I want to go for something with the Bosnian flag that's going to go really well with the tower, which I think is going to really pop. But that's also why I'm lapis poor. Now at this stage, we've definitely fast forward a little bit here. I've got the towers in place and now I'm starting to put in a little bit more of my details and starting to map out where I want to put things in this build. So taking this guy over to the next layer here, we've got ourselves some moons. Not fully done yet. I still got to make them a little bit more 3D defined, but I'm going to fill out the roofs now. So there's that. Now that we have the moons filled out, I also filled out the sun and I wanted to show you guys this in shaders because it really pops. Okay, so I would say that we got a lot of the line work done when it comes to the yellow concrete, but slight problem. Obviously, we're going to go over this here in just a moment. I'm completely out of yellow concrete when we're going to need a heck of a lot more. So we're going to have to restock up on that. And I'm a little bit nervous about the lapis. I'm not going to lie. I don't think it's going to be a la enough lapis to basically finish our roof here. We need to head back to the base and we need to get ourselves some more yellow concrete, which I'm not sure if we have any yellow dye to be perfectly honest, but we'll have to check the storage room and see what we got. Here's our yellow concrete. And it looks like we have none. And yellow dye, definitely not enough. So looks like I'll be over here for a little while. Well, I think this will be enough yellow dye, I'm hoping. But now we're going to have to go grab ourselves some more sand and some more gravel so we can actually make the concrete. Back to the storage room. And honestly, I'd say we have enough on hand. But before we make a bunch of concrete and get back to work, there's something I want to show you guys at night. And it's that right there. Now that I think it's actually dark enough, let me show you guys what this looks like with shaders on. Because there's something that I'm working towards with this build, and I'm going to explain that here in a minute. Take a look at that sun. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So let me let me hide my HUD. 
And let me show you guys a little bit about what I'm trying to work on for this build here in particular. So, you'll notice that I've got a lot of the lighting around here kind of accentuating the lines of the build. That's something I definitely want to improve on. I want to try to use lighting to my advantage to try and bring out the build a little bit more in a different perspective. But I absolutely love how this build is focused around photosynthesis and bees because I feel like they kind of go hand in hand in a very artistic way. And if I never went with photosynthesis, we would have never ended up with a really cool sun like this. So what's next? Well, there are a couple things that I would like to get done in today's stream. One of them being the top part of this castle right here. I kind of want to figure out a way that I want to try to maybe hold the sun or maybe have like something like mounting the sun or something like that. But while we do a little bit more work on this and we do a little bit more resource gathering for the castle and try to shape it up a bit more, I would actually love to focus in this area down here. So today's stream, I'm going to be building a little bit of a giant black widow spider that's going to be going right here. And the vision is when I'm down here looking up from the web, so this is going to be the epicenter of like where all the sp spiders are at and all that kind of cool stuff. We're going to be able to see the really cool hourglass figure of the spider. I'll show you guys it with shaders too. It's got a really cool shadowing effect from down here, but I want to put a really cool, creepy Black Widow spider kind of stretching its way out from underneath here. And then once I get the spider in place, we can start working a little bit more on the web. What do you mean by the web? Well, there's a couple things that I need to address here when it comes to the web. One of them being the bridge right here. I need to kind of work the web up here a little bit to make it look like it's kind of part of the bridge. I need to get rid of all this andesite and You'll probably notice it's all built out of wool. I do have my lightning rods in place, which is super handy. Obviously, don't want to have this stuff burning down. Although, if these were real spiders, I would definitely be burning this place down. Anyways, uh, I want to do a little bit of weathering. And let me show you guys what I mean by weathering. Bone blocks. So, I feel like bone blocks are going to be a really good way to make the uh, web look like it's been here for like a little while. So, let me show you guys a little bit of this. I should have brought some shears off. Lovely. <laughs> hold on hold on can i get this right okay so we're gonna come in here okay let's just get rid of a little bit of this wool here and then i can show you guys a little bit about what i mean by about weathering the web a little bit kind of giving a little bit of color a little bit of texture i plan to do this throughout the web i just kind of need to know exactly what i'm going to be doing here oh there's no flipping floor there well this is a big fail um what i mean a little bit here so I work my way up here now and we're looking down at the web. It's very, very like you don't really notice it that much, but you can kind of see there's a little bit of discoloration in that web right there. So I'll be focusing a little bit on making that happen. Not to mention when we get our Black Widow in here, I feel like this web is very, very flat. So I want to kind of sag the web underneath the Black Widow giving the web a little bit of weight behind it. it's making the spider feel a little bit more big but all of that will be addressed later today in today's stream for those of you guys who don't know i do live stream all of these builds over on twitch so if you guys want to see the whole process behind the scenes you guys can feel free to stop by and catch a stream but anyways i got work to do and it's a good thing that we have ourselves a concrete farm that we just built not long ago so we're going to take this yellow concrete we're going to be popping it into our machine right here. Let me just kind of pop this there. And we have a bunch of black, a uh, bunch of black concrete that I'm going to take out here in just a moment. But we're going to get a lot of this concrete in here so we can convert this into our concrete now. Looks like we're going to have to get through a little bit of this before we get into our yellow concrete. So we're going to run this machine. Hopefully this will be enough uh, TNT since we don't duplicate TNT around here. So uh, I'm going to run this and we'll see what we can get. So this is all the concrete that we're going to be utilizing for the castle. This should hopefully be enough. And then we got a bunch more in the system for whenever we need any more so we can run those later. But for now, I got myself a little bit of a box ready to go here. So, E. So that's roughly what I'm thinking for the size of the Black Widow that we're going to be going with today. So we take a little bit of a better look at this. I feel like most of the volume of a Black Widow is more going to be with its legs. And I think this is going to look really cool. Hopefully the positioning is well here and we're going to like kind of elevate it up off the spider web. 
and we'll obviously round it out over time but if we give ourselves a little bit of a template then we can work with that but for right now we need to work on more of the sizing of the spider first so all right now we've got a little bit of the spider outline from down here honestly it's probably the best angle for that we're gonna be putting the hourglass right in here but before we do that we've got a couple things that we need to do and that is make it actually 3d that way we can probably gonna elevate it up off the ground and then make our legs go uh, go down a little bit here. So I'm probably gonna maybe go up by three blocks, maybe five blocks, maybe five blocks. We'll figure that out as we go. So I'm gonna bring it up by five blocks here just by simply just tracing it on over pretty much. Just seeing what we got going on here and then we'll trace it on up from here. Coming across and over here. So now we've elevated the spider up by five blocks which I think five blocks will be perfect because then they'll give us those really long reaching arms from when we're moving on. All right, now that we have a little bit of the thorax done up here a little bit, elevated up, I'm gonna put the legs coming out of the thorax. I think this is a good size, but I need to work on the body of the spider itself. We haven't obviously made it all blacked out and put the hourglass on it yet. That's just because I wanna be able to actually count where we're going with a lot of this. So now to kind of shape and mold the body here a little bit. Now that we have a little bit of the thorax and a little bit of the body done up and we have the spider outlined from down here, you can see it from up top too. I need to elevate the legs to make it match with the rest of the spider now where we can put a little bit of the uh, the arches into the legs now, bringing it a little bit more to life. So the top portion of the body, it's going to take a little bit more work, but we're going to start connecting up our legs and then we'll start blacking out the spider and then of course put the hourglass on there. It's kind of hard to see, but I think I got a little bit of the legs elevated. I got a lot of black concrete. So now we're going to start turning this thing into an actual spider. And then we'll figure out the hourglass shape here in a bit. So let's start doing that. Well, we have the legs in now, and I think I love the legs. We're going to start working on the body now, but looking at the silhouette, it definitely looks cool. All right. Now that we got the entire spider blacked out, we even got a little bit of the hourglass on its stomach or its thorax. As we can fly up, you can see like the defining quality of what an actual Black Widow is. But now we're going to texture the spider a little bit because it'll obviously lost quite a bit of texture. So I'm going to come in here with like some black wool and maybe some coal and see what we could do here. All right. Now that we got the entire spider blacked out with a little bit of texture, it's kind of hard to bring out texture, especially when it's all like super dark and I want to keep it dark. Now for the most challenging part, arguably, is going to be the face of the spider. So we can give it some cool fangs, some eyes. How we're going to go about that, I don't know yet. Okay. I think we figured out a face for the guy. So eight eyes, just like a Black Widow would have. Gave it some cheeky fangs as well. Right there. And a little bit of a scar to just kind of bring out a little bit of its face. And then also made these eyes look like they were dead. I think this thing looks absolutely awesome. Plus from afar, when you were looking at it, you can kind of see a little bit of the stuff. These are micro blocks for those of you guys who are probably wondering. I get those guys who are wandering traders. But anyways, yeah, this is the Black Widow. All right, now that we got the spider done and everything's all lit up with candles, we're going to be shifting our focus towards the bridge here. So I want to create a little bit of a dividing line right here. I don't know if it's going to be roses, but there's going to be some flower right here that's going to divide up the bridge so we have two sections here we got a little bit of water and i might even put like little gaps between the moss that way we can kind of like see through there and then i'm gonna have cascading waterfalls cascading off of the side kind of keeping the spiders away kind of like down the water spout type deal and make it look a little bit more dilapidated okay so i think we got a little bit more of the bridge done here i've lowered the moss down a little bit and we're currently working on these little gargoyles up on the side Got some honey pools right here. We got some lights hidden in there as well. And I'm going to have water basically cascading off of here down into there, like we said before. So now just comes the time of like arching these slabs on over. And then we'll probably put chains and then lamps as well. I think that'll look really nice. Quick intermission from the bridge. We got ourselves a wandering trader and we got a brand new pack also hooked up here. So for those of you guys who are wondering how I get micro blocks in the world, you're about to find out. So, this guy should have a bunch of brand new blocks. Please, please, please have boot. And it worked! All right, perfect. So, we have Gladys. We have Night Sky. We have a Furnace. 
We have an astronaut. And we have Retro Mario. You can buy other little blocks here too, but that's all we got for this one. So let me lay these guys out for you guys real quick. So, so we can take a little bit of a better look at this. Okay, so Retro Mario. Boom. Straight out of 2-bit Mario or 8-bit Mario, whatever the heck you want to call it. We have an astronaut, which I thought was extremely cool. This is how I breathe life into my uh, into my world. Gladys, I believe, is from Portal. And two more. We have a furnace. I thought this was really cool looking block. And we got ourselves the starry night sky, which I thought was also a really cool decorative block. So that is the lineup for today's episode for microblocks yeah all right now we're just gonna come through here and we're gonna place the uh, the first block wrong like that and then we're just gonna do that all the way down here and i'll show you guys what this thing looks like at night because it should kind of glow over top of the honey which is gonna look really cool so we'll get all of our diorite walls in here like so i like the diorite too because i feel like it kind of brings out a different uh, color of white I'm trying to avoid using chains because I don't feel like the chains work as well with this build. We can come down like this. Like that. And then as we fly up and look down at the bridge, put on some shaders. You'll notice like a nice warm glow where all the honey is at, which I definitely don't want to get rid of. So I would love to keep it like that moving forward because it looks very... It looks very inviting, very warm looking like that, you know? But I think that's all the time that we're going to have for today. Let me know how you guys like the bridge. Let me know how you guys like the spider, Scarlet. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. So in the last episode, we built ourselves a little bit of a bridge. Built ourselves a spider on our spider web. And today I'm going to continue on with the actual castle and getting a little bit more of the bridge finalized. If you guys are liking these episodes, please leave a like, share it, and subscribe if you guys want some more. But without further ado, let's get into it. But before we really get into actually building up the castle today, we're gonna have to start farming up some resources. And what is that resource you might ask? Lapis. I'm gonna need thousands of blocks of lapis in order to do the entire castle roof here. So what I've been doing is I've been basically cycling these guys right here buying as much lapis as I possibly can, making it into blocks, and this is gonna be my primary source for my roof. You may also ask, where do I get all my emeralds from? Well, that one's a little bit more tricky. So if we take a look at our stats here, you'll notice that I've got almost 1.5 million villager trades here. So there's a reason for that, because what I do in order to get all my emeralds, since I don't have a raid farm, because those are super overpowered, is I basically just trade lots and lots and lots of iron blocks. I've traded them all with these guys right here. These are, what are these guys again? Uh, toolsmiths and weaponsmiths and stuff like that. It also helps like repair my tools. So I'll basically cycle these guys before I get into the actual trading of the lapis. And I know what you guys are thinking. Why didn't I cure my villagers? Well, there's a pretty easy answer for that. It's because I'm lazy. Mainly it's because I'm lazy. But all honesty, honestly, it's because I made this I made this whole build here mid-game. I wasn't actually being lazy. I've got my villager breeder behind these walls. I just didn't really see a point of basically curing up all my villagers. At this point of the game, I would honestly rather get rid of my resources. And with three blocks of iron turned into emeralds, I can get this much lapis, which converts over to 48 lapis blocks, which honestly isn't too bad especially when you have an iron farm in the spawn chunks like i do so this is a rayworks design right here uh the actual iron farm so i know that the spawn chunks are actually going to be changing here coming up here pretty soon so i'm fully aware of that just so you guys know i think i might actually just lose a module here but this right here is basically the heart of where i get all my emeralds in the game right here 350 per module that gets me about 1200 ish an hour and since I live stream this world every single day over on Twitch for about uh, seven hours, I would say that's uh, I, I would say we're never gonna have to worry about iron again. 
In the meantime of collecting up a bunch of iron so I could trade it with my villagers for more lapis, I'm also going to need to start buying some more quartz. So basically, for those of you guys who don't know about this, because I get asked so frequently, maxed out masons will actually sell you full blocks of quartz and quartz pillars for those of you guys who don't know. So basically, I cycle these guys so I can buy up blocks of quartz then to put inside my super smelter and as you guys can see i've been collecting up smooth quartz for quite a while so we're just gonna throw this in here i go by the snowball method since i don't afk in this world so a lot of my resources actually gather throughout the weeks before i take on a big project but that should answer a few of your guys's questions on how i gather resources for mega builds like what we're taking on today but without further ado let's get into the actual building phase of this project Okay, back at the castle here, we're gonna start filling in a little bit of the walls and I think I found out exactly which block I would like to do. So thinking about keeping the whole castle very clean, very porcelain, because I plan to put many layers on this castle. So starting off with this guy right here, I think we're just gonna start pinstriping the walls here and we're gonna build up a little bit of a wall face. That's all gonna be made out of coarse pillars. So you guys can be able to see this from afar. Just trying to keep it very, very clean looking like that. But you can see there's like a slight change between that, you know? Uh, obviously, we're going to put implement windows and we're going to implement a bunch of other things and stuff like that as we go layering in color. But that's exactly what we're going to be doing. All right. So we've gotten a little bit of the pillars on the bottom base here done up. So they're all like whited out on the sides here. We're going to put another layer in there. But we also got ourselves a wandering trader here. So let's see what the pick is for today. Uh, my water got all scuffed up. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Anyways, we got Squirtle Squad. We got Bidoof. Uh, we got this, uh, End Dragon Woman. We got a Ring-Tailed Slime. Robot. And a Skull with Mushrooms. For those of you guys who are ever wondering how I get micro blocks in the game, it's through this guy. The data packs, really cool. But yeah, let's go lay them out. Let's see what these guys look like. Squirtle Squad, made by one of my moderators. Mandolin. Looking slick. We also have Bidoof. For the, uh, for the Bidoof people out there. We got Ender. That's really cool head. What is that? What is that named again? Ender Dragon Woman. And I got that Doc M vibes. Uh, Robot. He's interested. Uh, we have ourselves the Ringtail Slime. <laughs> Don't know. And then we've got ourselves the Skull with Mushrooms growing out of it. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's the new lineup for today. We'll see if we get any more Wandering Traders throughout the day. I'll keep you guys posted. Well, it's come to my attention that the water has basically wiped out every single torch. One small water spill turned into a massive flipping issue. So yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of mobs in there. I wonder if we still have our torches down there. F. Okay, so now we cut off the water supply here. Hopefully, you know, third time's the charm on doing this. We should hopefully have all the water get corrected this time and then we can re redo all the water here in a bit but oh my gosh dude minecraft water gotta love it So now that we've actually done a little bit of the fill out here and we got the little bit of the line going across here, we started working on a little bit of the honeycomb pattern that's going to be built up around the walls of the actual castle, which I think are going to look awesome. Not sure if we're going to be going with glass or if we're going to go with honeycomb, but I think it's going to look awesome later on. So looking at it from back here, it kind of looks like a little bit of a lattice like laced wall, which I think definitely fits the vibe. Now that we got the lattice on both sides and the little bit of a honeycomb thing, we're gonna start working on a little bit of the roof here 
And then I want to kind of bring the honeycomb up and over the roof. Uh, but this is going to be a little bit more yellow. So I think it looks sick. And then, of course, as we start to build up our lapis, we're going to make our little bit of a stone platform so we can work it on up because I'm not crazy. I'm not made out of lapis here. This is going through an insane amount of lapis at this point. I'm going to try to curve it on over. And then we'll bring up all the uh, the gold and stuff like that, too. Now that we got the roof on top of that, I'm going to try to carry this design up and over with the yellow terracotta, making it look a little bit more like honeycomb, but it's carried up to the top of the roof here to kind of break up the blue a little bit. We'll see how that works. I'm not 100% sure if it'll work well. So I only brought up the gold here just a little bit. I'm really liking the flow though. So flying on up here. Let's see if we can try to figure this out here. So a lot of this is on an angle. So I'm thinking like if this guy goes right here, it kind of looks connected in a way, but it's not at the same time. So it's kind of a little bit weird to kind of connect it all up. So I think if it comes up like this, these blocks will have to just come up like that. In a way. Maybe we even bring these guys out and let's see what this thing looks like. Kind of uh, kind of like a lattice in a way. We'll have to figure out the top portion of that because I'm not too fond in that. So let me see if I can potentially like kind of bring this out like this how does this look and there's a lot of mobs in here i haven't lit this up yet exactly like that so with looking at this it kind of looks like it kind of like wraps up and around and kind of breaks up that blue there a little bit but i've got some torches and we're gonna get on the inside of this thing because it's probably pretty bad in here so let me see if i can fly up in here yep it's a little yep it's bad yep all right we're gonna have to fight our way through this hold on f why do I light things up afterwards? Yeah, got a little bit of stone up there too. We got ourselves a decent pathway in here too. Not too bad actually. And maybe we'll put like windows here and then the side too. Break that up. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna carry on this design on the other side of the uh, the blue now. All right, we're working on a little bit of the entrance here, and I think we got something really cool planned out. I'm gonna redesign the top of these towers. Don't worry, those will change. Uh, but I'm absolutely loving the yellow glazed terracotta going all the way up. We got the doorway all done up too. As we fly away, you'll even see that we even got both sides of the uh, castle done there. I still have a lot of towers to work in here and a lot of the roof to be done there too, but if I can get into a proper rhythm here, I think we can show you guys exactly how easy it is to place glazed terracotta. Um, that's just how easy it is. Just like that. You know what I mean? So every time, first try, coming around here, doing reverse circles. The other one took me uh, absolutely no time at all to put up because I don't struggle with uh, glazed terracotta in the slightest. So check it out. Look at it. All right, with those things done easily, we're going to start working down the bridge right here, giving it a little bit more of a structure. So I'm just going to kind of go in here and then kind of like pull down sections of the bridge to kind of give it a little bit of a shape here. So coming up here, I'm just going to kind of take this and I'm going to bring it down probably around three blocks, give or take. And we'll see. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, bring it around like three blocks, maybe two blocks. I'm not too sure yet. We'll have to take a look at this. Right, that's three blocks. Okay. And then we'll probably uh, pull this stuff together. Wait, did, is that too long? Oh no, we're chill, we're chill. Like that, creating a nice, like really cool arch. Like that. I think that kind of brings out a nice little cool, like look there in the middle, looks elegant. We'll map that out on the other side and then I'll even kind of like bring these down just a little bit more and we'll like kind of lace them together with quartz slabs, basically. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go do that. E. Then I'm just gonna bring this guy up one more block, kind of creating a really cool like look to this. See if I can hit every single one of these. That way I can have like maybe a potential wall that goes across here, maybe end rods or something. So we'll just kind of come up here. 
Do do do. And now we've got a little bit of a bridge kind of in place between the two, but it almost looks like it's laced together, which I really like. Now we got to do the actual lacing bit. All right, with that all said and done, now that we got the bridge done and we got ourselves a little bit of a pattern going on up there and everything's a little bit more lit, we're going to be working on a couple other things. So what are those other things? I want to try working on a little bit of the glass for today. So we have a little bit of a checkerboard pattern there, but that's not backlit yet. But what I really wanted to show you guys was this side wall here where we have a bunch of our honeycomb walls. We're going to be doing this, but not every single portion of the wall is going to be completely full. I'm going to make some of the honeycomb walls look like they're kind of like empty in a way, because not all of them are going to be full of honey, right? And looking at it from way over here, I think it looks really, really cool if you look behind me there. But without further ado, we also got ourselves a wandering trader, which we're going to go check out the trades for the day. Okay, so I found them. So let's see what we got going on for today for wandering trader heads. Okay, we got ourselves a cat lantern. So that's really cool. We got ourselves this skeleton with brown mushrooms. And of course, I'm going to show you guys these a little bit more blown up here in the future. Uh, we got the golden apple gift. We have ourselves a new ascended head. This one is for Kazzy. So if you've ascended in the world, you get yourself your own personal head that only you can utilize. We have Ghost Phase. We have Harley Quinn. And we have a Golden Apple. We can also buy these guys too if we wanted to, but I don't think we're gonna get those. But let's check uh, let's check out what these guys are gonna look like for today. So I'm gonna lay them out right here for you guys. We have the Cat Lantern, which I think look absolutely amazing. We have Harley Quinn right here. I'll give you guys like a whole wraparound view of that. I think that's a really cool head. We have Ghost Face. We have a Golden Apple Gift. I'm pretty sure one of my moderators made that. Mandolin again. Massive thank you to you. Uh, we have ourselves the Golden Apple. If you guys know anything about that, those are my channel points over on Twitch. And we have ourselves the skeleton head with the brown mushrooms growing out of it so not a bad selection for today but let's get back into the build now and i almost forgot this is kazzy's head right here not sure exactly what it is but i think it looks awesome okay so i got a couple of these uh honeycomb patterns kind of uh dug out right now so we're gonna get in here and we're gonna show you guys exactly how i'm gonna go about this so i think there's a really cool way to go about it so we're going to do our orange right next to our brown. So we're just going to go all the way up here. We're going to leave a space in right there. And we're going to work our way all the way around this thing, just like that. And then now we're going to start filling it in with, um, with a little bit of the brown. Working our way around that. And then we'll just rinse and repeat. We'll put in the, uh, the orange. And then it should leave me with like a, uh, a middle area here. Just like that, but it doesn't end there. Back here now, we got to put down our honeycomb and fill this up here a little bit. So we're just going to kind of come in here on the sides like this. And we'll just kind of completely backlight this or not backlight this, but fill this in back here with the, all the honeycomb so we can get our really cool pattern. And then we'll figure out what to do with the empty cells. Maybe we'll use some actual honey blocks or something like that for the other ones, but that's how you do that. And let me show you guys what this looks like on the other end now. So now we have two of them. So I'm going to continue on this pattern and we're going to go fill this thing up. So we now have a little bit of the honeycomb pattern going over here. I've got the lamps as well. I'm going to show you guys what that looks like with shaders on because I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. But now to take that honeycomb pattern and do the exact same thing over here on the other side. But when it's nighttime, I'll show you guys what it looks like with shaders. All right, here it is. Now you guys can see a little bit of the glow of the warm honeycombs over here on the side with those lamps. As we work on this side, should give it a nice warm glow on this side. Hold. Of course. Nice warm glow on this side with a nice warm glow on this side. But I don't want to go too overboard with it. Don't mind the heart. Don't mind the air through my heart. But yeah, it's all coming together nicely. I'm going to figure out how to light up these towers next. I wasn't recording.
F. Dude, I'm having a bad time right now. Now that we got the honeycomb walls built up on both sides of the build here, we can start focusing more on these towers right here where we're going to need a bunch of end rods to really bring out the towers and accentuate the lines that we got going on here. One problem. I don't have any more end rods. So we're going to have to go farm up some end rods. So we're going to go over to the blaze farm and do that. For those of you guys wondering how to build a end rods, swiping away at these blazes here will get us uh, the blaze rods. We take those blades rods, we take popcorn fruit, and with those two items here, we're able to make ourselves a bunch of end rods. So I'm gonna go pop some more coarse fruit, and then I'll be back here later on today so we can farm up even more blaze rods. But just for those of you guys who didn't know that, now you know. Okay, over here, I should have ourselves a little bit of a, whoop, coarse fruit farm over here. Let me just kind of get in here all gracefully and such. So this is a coarse fruit farm, so I can get myself a bunch of coarse fruit, throw it through the smelter. Let me check in here. Maybe I've got some. I actually got to wait in and out. It's not It's not a pretty look back here, just FYI. Okay, so we don't have a whole lot of that, but what I do have are snowballs. Why? Well, snowballs are actually my ideal way of shooting these guys down. So we just pop away at these guys. And then we'll farm up all the coarse fruit and we'll throw it all into our super smelter. With that all said and done, I think we've got more than enough coarse flour fruit to put inside of our smelter. So we're just gonna go pop that into the super smelter now. I definitely think that the end rods are gonna look really good here. I'm also gonna put them on the underside of the tower and I'm gonna start doing up this side of the tower. But I got a little bit of something that I wanna work out here. Oh, if I don't fall to my death. These, uh, these spots in particular i would like to kind of work these guys out so they have a little bit of a decorative pattern in the middle maybe we'll make these into actual flowers later on so i'm gonna go on with the end rods now i'm officially broke when it comes to end rods so i'm gonna have to be running that one back for a little while but i think this looks incredible we got a little bit of the bridge filled up here but a little bit more of the elephant in the room is going to be filling out the actual castle itself so I got to figure a way out on how to do that. So I'm thinking a combination between the stairs and also the slabs could make a very airy looking build here. So let's check in. Let's check this out. So placing the stairs like this, creating the wall along the pillar goes all the way up. And then we'll take a step back and we'll see what this looks like. But I think this would actually work really well with what we're going to be going with here because I could place blocks behind those stairs. So we're going to play around with this a little bit and I'm going to see what uh what we can come up with here. So for the side here, we're going to be going with a combination of the yellow terracotta with the brown terracotta going all the way up. I think that looks really nice. You can kind of see it a little bit from the distance, but it's very subtle and it's a nice way to take up that little bit of a space in there. We'll see if we even carry that on over because I got other plants up there. There you have it. Got a little bit more of the front facade done here. So we got the entire middle portion of the wall kind of completed. Give you guys a little bit of a closer look of this. So I did a little bit of an alternating pinstripe pattern right here with the uh, the chiseled and the um, pillars. Worked in a little bit of a B stripe down there. And then on the side of these pillars, I started working in a little bit more honeycomb and then honey going up towards the top to kind of bring in a little bit of a different color. As you can see, the honey is a little bit lighter than the honeycomb. So it kind of gives it like a, almost like a natural gradient. But obviously we're going to be building some stuff right here in the middle as a little bit of a focal point. We're going to have to work out how we want to do our door frame and work out these sideways pillars and work out the, uh, the door right here. But I think we're going to have to leave that one for the next episode. Welcome back. Last episode, let's see what the frick, man. You guys aren't here. Welcome back. Last episode, we were working a little bit on the castle. Today, I plan to finish the front facade of the castle. That way, we know exactly where we're going from here. But we're going to need some resources before we make that happen. We're going to need ourselves some blue wool, some lapis, some honeycomb, and of course, lots of end rods. So I can finish up lighting up a lot of the line work that we got going on here. Once we're done that, We'll be moving more into like the spider realm of things. So we're going to be doing a little bit of the contrast underneath the spider web, working a little bit more towards that. And 
Coming up here, we will be updating our map. So this is week one, week two, and then third week, I hope to have the entirety of the, underneath the spider web fully done. So let's get into it. So when it comes to blue wool, we actually have a fair bit of blue wool. Honeycomb, I think is gonna be next inside of the storage room. So I think we have a bunch of honeycomb. So we'll just load this up. I have next to none when it comes to lapis, but I've been training quite a bit lately. But that also reminds me, I think we're going to have to shut off our honey farms over in the spawn chunks. So this is all the lapis that we've been collecting up from the uh, from the cleric. So we're definitely going to be buying some more lapis as we go. Over here at the bee farm inside the spawn chunks, it's looking like things are pretty much overflowing at this point. So I'm going to have to turn this thing off again. So I'm going to farm up all the hives and farm up all of the... Um, the, um, whatever the heck these things are called, these bee boxes, because we are fully loaded when it comes down to it. And a lot of these boxes over here are completely loaded as well. So we'll have to be turning that off. All right, now that that's done, we should have a little bit better frames out here. Completely uh, disabled all of this. I'll probably craft up all these blocks later, but for right now, I'm a bit too lazy for that. Another big resource that we're gonna need underneath the spider web is going to be Podzil. And I have a little bit of a plan for that. I'm gonna basically get a bunch of big spruce trees, bone meal them up, because I need to get rid of all of this moss in order to expand our skull clan. So we're gonna be doing that. Well, dang, completely out of saplings now. And I don't think this is gonna be enough podzel. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fortune hoe all of these leaves and see how many saplings we can get back. All right. That's all I plan to do. I've got us uh, got about three stacks of saplings. I'm just going to continue to keep growing. And hopefully that will be enough podzel for us to move forward with our project. Now it's time to pull up all the podzel. Hoping to get at least two boxes of podzel from all of this, but we'll see what happens. I'll check back in with you guys here in a minute. Well, after just a couple minutes of uh, getting spruce, and by spruce, I mean podzel, we've gotten all the way up to uh, about that point. So I think we're going to need a heck of a lot more shulker boxes here, but I'm here for it. Okay, we're almost there when it comes to all the podzel. Check this out. We got ourselves a little bit of podzel. We're almost there, and I've almost gotten it all out of the thing, but we got ourselves a wandering trader. Now to only find the wandering trader deep within the forest here. Not quite sure where he would be at. Yeah, a lot of the forest did burn down. Found him. Over here by the fire where it's nice and safe. Cool. All right, let's see what we got today. This pickings. We got the... Awaken Summoning Eye. Very cool. We have a glare. We got ourselves a big pot. We got a crocodile miner. We got ourselves sands. Not sure what that is. And Crash Bandicoot. Also, we have Lodestone. Yeah, right. I don't have Lodestones, man. It's like kind of like expensive. But let's take a look at these guys real quick. Crocodile Miner. Absolutely love this guy. I think he turned out fantastic. Kind of reminds me of, um, uh, uh, what's that game called with the monkeys? Um, uh, Donkey Kong. We have the Awakening Eye, which I think looks absolutely adorable. We have the Large Pot. It's a cauldron on top of a campfire. The Glare. If you guys remember that one is one of the mobs that was uh, almost voted in back in the day. We have ourselves San, who is from Undertale, I've been informed, live over here on the Twitch chat. And of course, Crash Bandicoot. You guys might know who Crash is. Crash is like an old time video game. I flip and love Crash. But that is the lineup for today. That does it for the Podzel now that we got all the Podzel. We have six boxes of Podzel. We have our honeycomb. We have our lapis that we're still working on currently. We have our blue wool and a bunch of really cool banners that I can actually cr probably show you guys these right now while we're here that we're going to incorporate into the build at some point. We have this really cool banner right here. We have the sunflower banner. We have the bee banner. And we have a cool sun banner. I think these are really cool. But back to lapis trading, and we need to go make ourselves some end rods too. That's all the lapis that we were managing to get today. Managing. 
Yep, that's a word. Anyways, that's all the lapis that we were able to get today. Now we're going to go over to the build and we're going to continue to keep building over there. I got a bunch of end rods that we're going to blow through real fast because I plan to get a lot of this lit up. So, yee. Yeah. Well, flip. Ran out of end rods again. Would you look at that? I feel like this is going to be an ongoing, uh, ongoing resource that's going to be a huge pain in the neck. But check it out. A little bit more of the lighting is done around the castle. Really bringing out these pillars now. Obviously, I got some lighting to do above there. I think I have a little bit of a plan for what we're going to do along here to kind of bring out these lines. So let's check that out here in a second. So I'm thinking right here, we might be able to dangle in some of this stuff. So let me come in down here. Going to line it up with the yellow a little bit. Oh, there's not even a thing back there. Okay, well, I knew that. Let's see what this looks like. I don't know if it's going to stand... Uh. Ah, uh, stands out a bit much, so no. Back to the drawing board, that's not actually going to work. I want to do something a little bit more subtle. I know of one thing that we can do while we wait for our end rods to basically replenish themselves. I got a bunch of honeycomb that I need to place on the sides here. And I got a bunch of honey that I need to place up there. And then we'll be segueing our way into the bottom portion of this, putting a bunch of podzil down. Back at the blazer farm. You know what that means. Over here farming some more end rods because this has become my life at this point and while we run back our end rods i think it's a perfect time to segue over to this build down here where we can start laying down a lot of that podzel we were farming up all right so the bottom of the web here web here we're basically just going to place down a bunch of uh podzel underneath i think it's really going to help bring out the web a lot more especially because the web is white i don't want to go with something dark i want to go with something a little bit more brown I think it'll be really nice to kind of go along with this web. Ever wondered what six boxes of Podzil looks like? Well, you're looking at it. We're completely out of Podzil now. I'm going to have to run it back when it comes down to the Podzil, but I think it's a great contrast for the web. We're continuing all this going around, and then this middle bit, I'm probably going to make a little bit darker for the epicenter of where all the spiders are going to be coming from. But there you have it. Back to the grind. Got herself about three boxes of shulker. What the hell? Got herself about three boxes of podzel now, but we also got ourselves a wandering trader here. So let's see what we got going on. Okay. So we got ghost face. We have the undead ender dragon. I don't know if I know what that is. We got a really cool lamp. We have a skulk mushroom and a stone castle everything else not really interested in so let me show you guys the new ones you guys have already seen the ghost face let me show you guys what we got going on here skulk mushroom they kind of look rotten we have a lantern we have ourselves a miniature castle and last but not least we have ourselves the undead ender dragon head oh i added this one that looks cool. It's like an undead ender dragon. All right, but back to it. I'm going to go back over to Podzo grinding. And well, probably about seven, eight shulker boxes later, I would say we're fully done with the Podzil as the first layer of the canvas that's about to go down. I would like to kind of start draping down a little bit of the cliff sides and then adding a little bit more detail to like where the epicenter of our spiders are going to come from. So that means like this main hole right here. I want to make this hole down there a little bit more darker. It's Monday. And you guys know what that means? It's map day. We're going to have to fully update all of our maps that we've got going on here, which I'm super excited for because I think it's going to be a pretty massive change. This is week one. This is week two. And we're going to be placing week three right here. So let's get up and get that all set up. I got all the stuff like organized. I'm going to be like locking some maps. That way I can have like progressive updates. But we're going to do a three by three fully updated map of the entire area so there you have it i've got all nine maps completely done now i'm gonna go lock up all the maps and after this we have ourselves a wandering trader to check out so let's go over here and let's see if i can do this first try i'm gonna need to grab out my my item frames yeah that's a tornado in the background kind of crazy got a cool sky pack So what we're going to do is I'm just going to place this stuff in here with the glass panes. That way I have like a locked map and then I have a map that's not locked. Wait. 
I think I was supposed to... I was supposed to, um... I was supposed to duplicate that first. Whoops. Now that I fixed that up, I'm going to duplicate all these maps before I get into things. So let me just kind of pop all these guys in like this so I can make double the amount of maps that I need. And then I'm going to pop them into my chest. Oh, we don't need to do that guy. I don't even know if you can duplicate uh, locked maps. Uh, and then we're going to take uh, these guys and we're going to plop them in here. And then we will lock them all up and we're going to place them onto our wall. So let's just get through all that. And now I can do this step, which I think the web looks insane. Wait. What? Okay, I thought for a minute there something was scuffed. It's kind of uh, can, kind of confusing. Wait, why can I not see any of these maps? It's just because I'm an idiot. Don't answer that. All right. Now we can get everything uh, set up over here. So we'll take these guys and we'll plop them in. Next layer. And our last layer, which this last layer probably won't even be seen until like the final ish project. But now you can see them all week one, week two, week three. I'd say we got a fairly good amount of work done in the, the last week. We got a little bit more of the castle done, obviously. It's hard to pick up on the uh, actual map, but you can see that we got a lot of our roof done. Obviously, we got ourselves the sun. And then all the pods all underneath here. And then, of course, the bridge as well. I would say this was a very productive week. Actually, hold on. And the spider. That spider looks so cool. We'll have to hide our uh, our beacon beam areas as well. But I think that's pretty neat. Speaking of neat, though, we have ourselves a wandering trader that we need to start buying from. We're going to fly up over here. I think he spawned over here somewhere. So we're going to see exactly what micro blocks that we have available. So where is he? He could be anywhere. He, he did spawn around this area. So I'm kind of curious to see if we could pot potentially find him around this area. This may take a little while. Okay, I've been informed by Twitch chat that apparently the wandering trader's on the wall. I do see a llama. But where's the trader? Um, This is kind of sus. Does that mean he spawned up here? Is he up here? I don't understand where this wandering trader's at. Oh, he's right here. He's tucked away. You kidding me? All right, let's see what we got going on here. We got Emperor Zerg from Toy Story. We have a star. We've got a bamboo bag. And we got ourselves a Nuka-Cola can. Let's go check these things out. Time to take a little bit of a closer look at these micro blocks. So we have the star, which I thought was really cool because they kind of looked like this star. It kind of looks like a, Mike, uh, a Mario star as well. We have Zerg, which was actually a really cool head. Uh, Buzz Lightyear was terrible, so Zerg was pretty cool. We got ourselves a Nuka Cola can, so it should just say uh, Nuka Cola on the sides here, which I'm a massive fan of Fallout for those of you guys who don't know. And then we got a bag of bamboo. So that's the that's the select of today. With today's episode, I would like to get around to a little bit more of the epicenter of the spider web. Uh, or spider web more like cavern. I'm gonna be taking some smooth basalt and I'm gonna be putting it down inside of there with a nice like dark area where all the spiders are gonna be crawling out of. But over here, it's looking like I only have one box of the smooth basalt. So we're gonna go back to the base and grab some more. So it looks like we already have ourselves a box of smooth basalt. I'm gonna guess that two boxes of smooth basalt should be good for what we got planned for today. Chalker boxes of basalt was in fact definitely not enough. But we did make a little bit of headway when it comes to all the basalt down there. And it kind of darkens up the hole a little bit. So I have to do a lot of this over here. And then I need to make my way around there. So maybe three, four more boxes? I'm not too sure. But I blame Twitch chat. In order to make all the basalt that we're going to need, we're going to have to start smelting up a bunch of basalt. So let me grab a little bit of this. Uh-oh. I'm hoping that we have basalt in here somewhere. Oh, oh, we do, we do, we do. I've been uh, going at the reserves here for like a little bit. 
And it's, I don't really know which one of these barrels actually have basalt in them, but so we're gonna kind of see what we got going on and it's not really looking too good. Uh oh. With all 240 furnaces going with the super smelter, I'm currently, oh, that's a button. I'm currently running completely super low on coal. So I got to I run back a little bit of the coal here. So we got to go over to the Wither Skeleton Farm so we can reload a lot of the coal. But honestly, this probably will be enough to finish what we're doing today. Over at the Wither Skeleton Farm, and we're going to go grab ourselves a little bit of coal so we could restock all of our super smelters. So hopefully we got some coal up in here. Otherwise, we're probably going to be here for a little bit. Judging by the looks of it, it doesn't look like we have a whole lot of coal. So I think we're going to be here for a little while. Collecting up a little bit of uh, coal here. So I guess I'll be up here swiping away at my wither skeleton farm. Hopefully to gather enough coal. One shulker box later of coal. I'm hoping that will basically be enough for our super smelter to pretty much catch up fully. But now that coal's on my radar, I'm probably gonna start snowballing the coal resources periodically here and there. Well, while we wait for our smooth basalt to start cooking up and get through a little bit of that crisis, I've got some end rods that we need to farm up. So we're going over to the end island so I can farm up a bunch of coarse, coarse flower fruits, whatever you wanna call those. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's pass the asteroid. I think if we just get past this asteroid, we'll make it to our outer islands. It's a little bit less scary than just flying over an open void. It kind of feels a little bit more secure. Like I'm not just like flying over the void. I've got a little bit more of like a, a sense of like how far the outer islands are. And it kind of gives you a different sense of scale on like how like many builds we have in our end as well. So here we are. I'm going to be taking down all of this stuff over here so we get as much uh, coarse fruit as we possibly can. I think that we have enough to make a lot of end rods here. There's no way, no way are we not going to have enough here. So I'm going to go cook this stuff up in our super smelter that we don't have enough coal for right now because, you know, we got problems. Well, you know what? There's a moment in every Minecrafter's career where he fudges up. Today is one of those fudge ups. So by placing all that smooth basalt down there, there's a slight oversight that I never even thought about. And that is that smooth basalt actually turns out to be black on a map. Who would have thunk? Thought it was going to be gray, but hey, here we are. And I completely lose like my entire spider. <sighs> so you know what that means. I blame Twitch chat. So we're almost done with uh, ripping up all the basalts. But we got ourselves another wandering trader, so you know what that means. We're gonna see what we can get from this guy. Oh, we got Hulk. Sorry if I just peeked the mic super loud. Uh, we got Squirtle Squad, Crash Bandicoot, which you guys have all seen these guys. We have the Incredible Hulk. We have a Leprechaun hat. And we have ourselves a red mushroom bag. Other micro blocks that we have here, not really interested in them too much, but let me show you guys what these guys look like. This is the red mushroom bag. You guys have already seen Crash Bandicoot. You guys have seen that in the other episode. Uh, we have a leprechaun hat and we also have the Hulk. So those are the new additions. And since he didn't have the head that we we're looking for. Well, that's better. All right, well, let's get into a little bit more of the end rods up here. But before I do that, I want to actually kind of work out the terrain that goes around all these cliffs coming down a little bit better. So we don't have a, just a flat wall kind of holding everything in place. And over here as well, I have like nothing over here. So yeah, there's quite a bit of work to be done on this side, as you guys could probably tell. So we've made a little bit of a progress with a little bit of the dirt and stuff like that. Landscape kind of coming into the hole here a little bit. We're working our way all the way around here. So I have a little bit of a template, but I think this looks a heck of a lot better than this basically looked. Obviously, there's a lot of layers that I need to continuously add to this whole ordeal, but we got ourselves a wandering trader. So you know what that means. Okay, so this is probably the worst spawning spot for a wandering trader. I think he spawned inside of here. He is in here. Oh my gosh, is he still alive? Okay, there's a there's a ma this guy might not be alive. Just saying. Uh uh oh. Oh no. Did he kill my wandering trader? No, you didn't. Why? 
No, I think he did. I can't even hit this guy. Get out of there. I can't believe you guys. Well, false alarm. There's no traitors because apparently he just spawned underneath the ground and uh, basically died. Just when you think you know wandering traitors, you don't. So I think that looks a heck of a lot better right there. Now we're not coming off to a pretty much just a straight shear, like cut off the thing. We've actually grabbed and pulled out a little bit more of the the grass and all of the dirt, carried it on downwards with all of the tough as well, and eat it at eat it. Definitely said eat it, but I'm not doing a third take on this. Uh, we even added a little bit of the leaves just for a little bit of foliage. Obviously, we have a lot to do when I comes to around the hole so there's going to be a lot of terraforming that needs to go around here but i'm going to have to build up more of this capsule so we're able to basically move this into the next stage because obviously the castle has quite a bit that needs to happen there's a lot of lapis that needs to be placed i need to get this whole middle part of the castle done and i need to actually carry around the castle the whole way that way i can have a little bit more of an interior done up and we're going to have a heck of a lot more spiders when it comes to the castle as well. And we also have ourselves a string farm we need to build. But I think that's all the time that we have for today. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next episode. Last episode, we did our entirety of the round the cliff. I fudged it. Sorry, I'm just going to get this. Uh, I got to get this flipping intro in here. So I can start today. Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series, and I'm struggling to stay on this moss carpet here, but last episode, we did the entirety of Around the Hole right here, doing a little bit of a cliff phase. Today, I would like to focus a little bit more attention towards the castle again, because there's obviously quite a bit to fill in here. Let's throw on some shaders here in a minute. Give it a second. All right, so you can kind of see where I have all the end rods and stuff like that today. I would like to kind of fill it out a little bit more because obviously on the side here, when we look at our castle, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I have like nothing built out here. I also got to build the uh, the throne room and I got to carry around the wall here. But now that we have ourselves a consistent palette and we know exactly what resources we need to farm, among other things, that means that we have a little bit of a guideline to start working with. So. Let's go ahead and get that started. When it comes to resources that we're going to need for today, we're going to need a lot of quartz, obviously. We're going to need to make ourselves a bunch of chisel quartz moving forward. So we have a we have ourselves a bunch of smooth quartz, but do we have a bunch of regular quartz as well? Not really. So we're going to have to buy that from villagers. We have next to no uh, quartz pillars. Oh, never mind. We have a lot of uh, quartz pillars, so we should be okay for the quartz pillars. And then, of course, I grabbed ourselves the box of lapis that we're going to have to continue to keep filling up. And then how are we looking on blue wool right now? Blue wool should be fine. And then yellow concrete. What are we looking at? I know I have a bunch of yellow concrete over there. Yellow concrete could be an issue. So let's go start trading for all these resources. And for you number folks out there, we've gone through about almost 69,000 villager trades since we started this project. We're probably gonna finish around 100,000. All right, when it comes to lapis, we've been buying some lapis over the last week or so. So we have ourselves a full shulker box of lapis, and then I'm gonna continue to keep buying lapis as we go. As for just regular blocks of quartz, that's a work in progress. One of the resources that we're going to need today is going to be yellow concrete and we've got one slight problem i'm out of tnt so we're gonna have to craft some more but for right now i can go ahead and start loading up all the concrete that we crafted into our machine here then i'll go craft up a bunch of tnt which i'm going to need probably a little bit more sand in order to do well turns out i actually had a little bit of sand in here so hopefully that's enough to craft up about nine stacks of tnt we'll see what happens here but you know, since we don't duplicate TNT, it's a little bit more of a uh, a little bit more of a process in order to get all the TNT that we're going to need for today. But shouldn't it be that bad? It's not that uh, expensive of a resource now, is it? So I only need nine stacks. Got ourselves a bunch of TNT now. Just gonna kind of load up the system here, and we're gonna go make some concrete now. And with a quick five minutes worth of work, I got myself almost a full shulker box of yellow concrete with a lot more that we could get if I can make this jump. A lot more that we could get later on today if we need more. Only took about a half an hour, but we also got ourselves a full shulker box of end rods, so we'll see how long that lasts. Hey, uh, this right here. 
Zuolan 888 just redeemed Ascend. Ascended being of futuristic worlds. Well, there you have it. We're going through our end tunnel. We're going to make our way over to the end with shaders on. Zeus just ascended as the ascended being of future worlds, which is really cool. So we're going to head on over to the end and we can get him a fancy new banner and all that kind of stuff. So I'll show you guys exactly how that's done. Oh, almost missed my ride. Welcome to our end hub. As a little bit of a tradition, every time somebody ascends, we go over to the end, we go over to our board of celebrations, and we let them pick a banner. I'll show you guys exactly how that's done. So we're in the end hub now, and we get the rip around, and we're going to make our way over to the god of celebrations, and you can kind of take in a little bit of the ascensions that we have nearby as we go over and get Zoo his brand new banner for his Hall of Fame plot. Which one of these bad boys do you want? For those of you guys who are wondering, I'm also live streaming right now. I record all the live streams. While uh, Zoo is uh, deciding which one he wants to be a part of, we're going to add him to the book. Everybody in here that you guys are seeing, these are... This is my second book of everybody who has ascended thus far and their title. These are what all my uh, my makeup builds are based around. So now that we have Zoo in here, post them in here. And Zoo's title is going to be Ascended Being of the Futuristic Worlds. And then we'll add them back up into here. These are all the ascensions that I've completed so far. Not including the two that I'm working on currently. And Zoo wants the middle bottom, please. This blue one right here. There's also a few other things inside this world. Inside of this build in particular. So we have our one year, our two year, our three year, and our four years that we spent in this world. We have our 100k on YouTube. We have our one year without popping a totem, or we're super close to getting two. And we have our 100k on Twitch. Everything that you guys see here is into the millions. So netherrack, stone, attack, jumping, and everything is all documented down here. So we're working towards stuff progressively. And we also have things like their 5,000, 10,000, and uh, every 5,000 days we put them up into there. So that's exactly what this place is. All right, now with all that said and done, we have all of our resources ready to go. So we got a shulker box of bones. We got our lapis, quartz pillars, a lot of quartz pillars actually. And then I got two boxes of the, the chiseled quartz, a whole box of end rods, honey, honeycomb, and yellow concrete. So I think we're ready to go. All right, back over here at the build. I plan to do a little bit of, obviously we got to map this place out a little bit better. I want to try to get a little bit of the interior kind of mapped out so I know exactly how big of a throne room we're dealing with. I got the top roof that we need to put in here. We got to put in the side roofs. We got a bunch of stuff to do here. So I got my andesite and I'm ready to go. Probably a little bit difficult to make out here, but I have my tower set up there, 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 and then all the way around. I just need to connect this thing up. But we got ourselves a wandering trader. Don't tell me he's inside it. He is, of course, inside of the cave. I found him. Apparently, he ditched his llama. Anyways, he's over here. 
I don't know what's going on with these guys, but they always fall into holes and die. So, what do we got here? Oh, we got Armor Cross, finally. Yeah, we got Winnie the Pooh. We got Squirtle Squad. We have a Warped Wood Monster. We have Armor Cross, one of the Ascended. And we have ourselves a um, Aristocrat Pig. I think that's how you say that. Oh, we do have ourselves a The Howling Pot. Hmm, decisions, decisions. All right, let's take a look at what we got going on here. So I have Winnie the Pooh, which I, th uh, I thought with that was a really cool one looking one. If I can get over my words here. We have a Warped Monster. Very creepy looking. You guys have already seen the pig and Squirtle, but let me show you guys here one more time. It's a monocle and a Squirtle Squad guy. And then, of course, we have Armor Cross, one of the Ascended. Looking schnazzy, and I think I might actually get that pot. And the Howl pot that we wanted to grab, it's got the little wolf on it, so of course we had to grab that. Okay, so now that I have all of the castle footprint basically mapped out now, I gotta place a bunch of beacons. But we only have six beacons to place, but I'm gonna need probably about 24 beacons. If I place one in each corridor right here, I think I can get away with 24 beacons. So we're gonna have to go to the end. We're gonna have to go restock up on some iron and we're gonna go make ourselves some beacons while we're at it. But in order to make beacons, we're gonna need ourselves a bunch of iron. So we're gonna come over here to the iron farm so I can make up a bunch of blocks. Obviously the iron farm is always going since it's inside the spawn chunk. So that shouldn't be an issue. Now that we got 21 stars, and a little bit of wither roses. I'm just going to pop these guys on over here. And so I think I'm actually kind of running a little bit low on black dyes. So I'm just going to kind of keep these wither roses coming in here. And we'll go craft up uh, some beacons. 21 beacons later. I think this brings us up to the total of 27. Which I think I only needed 24. But I guess we'll find out. All right. I think that's enough beacons now. Uh, obviously, I always have my beacons turned off when I'm doing a project. Because this is a little bit overwhelming. But looking back here, I think I've kind of spaced them out enough. I might actually have a little bit of a dead spot right here in the center. But if I can build up the castle for the most part, I might be able to sneak a beacon in right here in the center. Maybe in the roof or something like that. So we're going to start off by basically connecting up all these pillars with our... What is this stuff called? Quartz pillar, basically. We're going to put our walls in here and then we're going to put the honeycomb pattern going all the way across the walls, just like we did over there. And then we're going to be doing the roofs and stuff. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Get wrecked, nerd. Just want to give you guys a friendly reminder that um, this is what I'm having to deal with over on Twitch. For those of you guys who are watching on YouTube, while I'm building these really cool builds, this is basically what I have to listen to in the background. So thank you to Amandroid, one of my moderators, and Sleeps a Lot. Just another troll inside the chat for making this a, a pleasure. All right, now that we have the walls all the way around here in a honeycomb pattern, I'm going to start building up where the towers are obviously going to go so I can start working out the different height variations. There goes all of our quartz pillars. Officially, have gone through five shulker boxes of quartz. But we did manage to get all the walls in place, at least uh, before we start putting the honeycomb pattern in place. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring up all the towers to the right heights that I wanted to. I am bringing these towers back here a little bit higher. That way, when we're looking over there for sight lines and stuff like that, you'll see these top towers up here a little bit more. And this tower, it's going to match these towers. Because I don't want anything really coming up to here. But things that are also subject to change. Also, is that a piece of floating stone? Okay, no, that totally is. A lot of things around here are subject to change. But anyways... I need to go farm up some more quartz pillars. Back at the storage. And I think... Well, we probably got about three shulker boxes worth of the quartz pillars here. Thankfully for us, we'll be able to trade with the villagers in order to get more. I don't have a whole lot of emeralds left over, but we did manage to get a little bit of uh, quartz pillars. So I'm hoping that that will be enough to continue on the project. So I'm going to be back and forth here for a little while gathering more resources but while we're at it i'm gonna go over to the castle again to start building it up while building up a little bit more of the castle back there we've also decided that i'm gonna start lighting up a little bit of this web to bring it out a little bit and i think it looks a heck of a lot better looking at this side in comparison to this side so i'm gonna be lighting this up with all the end rods because you know we're not struggling with end rods enough 
I would say one more night and we'll be done the web. But we gotta wait till nighttime. Time to place one of the best sounding blocks in the game in our towers here. Hopefully this is the right spot for this pillar. They just go in here a little bit. I'll get rid of those uh, lines here in a minute, but this is gonna go all the way up to the top. That's nice. I think that looks way better than what we had before. It actually really brings out the entire web. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You don't really see the spider, but I think that's actually a good thing because I feel like spiders are supposed to be hidden in webs. So let's take a look at what this thing looks like from underneath and see if it makes much of a difference down here. Hopefully I don't get ganked on my way down, but I think right here in particular, yeah. It's like the perfect spot to be looking up at the web and then you can kind of see the sky with the shaders and stuff like that. Cheeky little nebula. And then we're looking up at the spider. I think this looks awesome. Well, I think we're done with the quartz pillars and we got all of it in place right now. Now I want to go around the sides here and start working on a little bit more of the roof here, going all the way around for our little courtyard here before we move forward with the towers. And then I'll start working on like how we're going to bring these guys up but yellow concrete. And I think it's as easy as basically coming along here, putting in all of our yellow concrete. I think it lines up perfectly with that thing. And then we got to start working on a little bit of the archways. But before we do that, we'll have to put in our lapis with our blue wool. All right, time to start doing the little pattern that we're going to have on the roof here. So I think we skip three and then we do one, skip three, do another one so on and so forth like we did over there and that will be the honeycomb pattern that we got going up and over basically and when it comes to the outside bits when we're going to lace it on over top of the roofs i'm only going to do the exterior bits i think it'll make our job a little bit easier because i plan to bring these bits together and then wrap them over the roof so if i do both sides things might not line up properly time to use all the lapis we own hopefully we have a lot more lapis and it's going to be required to go around this entire thing but here we go. Just a few more layers higher. These roofs are going to be a little bit shorter than the roofs, uh, these roofs, but that's okay. It's going to kind of stagger in height here. But we got ourselves a wandering trader. So we just got to find the guy. I found him inside the spider hole because these guys have zero self-preservation. He wants to be near all the creepers. But let's see what we got. Oh, we got ourselves an ender golem. Very cool looking head. We have ourselves a bull rog. I thought that was really cool. We got ourselves a cat lantern and armor cross again, which is awesome because I need more of his heads anyways. Part of the ascended. Uh, and then we got some decorative pots and stuff of like that, but I don't know if the plant is one that I want to get. Let's check out these heads. Starting off the bull rog. I think this guy looks absolutely amazing. Oh, he looks really cool. And I know there's a lot of you guys who are Lord of the Rings fans out there. Could be something you guys want to showcase on your Hall of Fame plots. We have ourselves the End Golem. I thought this guy was really cool as well. Very purple looking head. Looks like almost like it's wearing like a mask. You guys have already seen the cat, but I'll show you guys it once more. But I think it looks awesome. But yeah, that's the picks from today. But back to the roof because this roof ain't going to finish itself. Doing a little bit more layering on the roof here. I uh, decided to put in the dark oak here because I think that the dark oak actually ties really nicely with the honeycomb pattern up there. And then we put the end rods up here. I'm waiting till nighttime so I can see what that looks like. But I also added something over here that I think looks kind of neat. Utilizing the spore blossoms and the honey, the honey hives, the, the honey boxes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, placing them underneath the bridge and then kind of staggering them like so. Let me know if you guys like that because I'm not 100% sold on it yet, but I would like to incorporate more flowers as we go. It's a little hard to see, but you guys can notice a little bit of the twinkle right there. I think I'm going to be doing this all the way around the castle now. They do look really cool. They look like little uh, miniature stingers, so I want to try and incorporate these, but I think it looked great at night, especially the spider web. if I haven't shown you guys that already. This spider web really pops with all those end rods. So let's do this. Now that we have a little bit more of the detailing work done here, there's something important that we need to address. And don't ask me how, don't ask me why, but there's just an insane amount of sheep in here that we need to get out of the castle grounds 
so I can actually start working here. So we're going to do that. There's a lot of mobs in here. I don't want to I don't want to kill them either. Maybe we'll feed them to the, the spiders as sacrificial uh, sheep, but this is way, way too crazy. Maybe we made ourselves a passive mob farm. Maybe you guys understand this a little bit more better than I do, but this is this is crazy, right? I'm not I'm not losing it. This is just a crazy amount of mobs in a small area. We may have lost one. I did tell him if he fell into the hole, it wasn't my fault. Well, I think that's all of them. I don't know what's going on around here, but I know if any more mobs spawn in here, I think I may have made an accidental mob farm or some sort. I don't know. That's the best sound in the game right there. Picking up all the dirt. I've now filled up about, what, six double, uh, six, not double chests, but six shulker boxes full of dirt. But this sound right here, best sound in the game. Brought it all the way down to Y14 now. Now I'm going to have to bring down these walls right here. Except I don't think our walls are going to have to go all the way down. I want to leave enough roof, uh, enough room down here so I could build my floor at least three, four thick. Uh, given, uh, given that. And then over here, I could fill this in to make it all flat and stuff. But I honestly think that'd be a waste of time. I have to start putting all this stuff back in the storage room though and repair a little bit of our tools. But I think this looks a lot more clean than what it was before. And not a crazy amount of sheep in here either. Speaking of good sounds. Check this out. Oh, great. Phantoms. And check it out. We got a little bit of a uh, freaking sheep trying to make his way back in there. Of course. Get that guy out of here. Hold on. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I want to start laying out the interior of this place now that we got this whole thing like basically flattened out gonna work a little bit on these things flatten these things out but i have a floor that i would love to work in today just to kind of see how big the main castle needs to be if i can be not harassed by phantoms right now please get i am not hitting any of these shots all right also I'm working on these towers over here. I'm going to start bringing these guys up so we can start bringing them up to the points and everything like that. And then I could do these guys back here and then uh, corresponding. But I think that these towers are really shaping up really nice. And then I might create some really cool like beehives. I think I might have a plan for what we're going to be doing today as in terms of like bees looking like they're out in the, uh, the distance. So we'll see how that goes. But before I go ahead and I start addressing a little bit more of these towers back here, I'm actually going to start bringing down the walls over here a little bit just to make things fit a little bit nicer for when I put my floor in place. So let's go ahead and start placing down our pillars. Look how clean this looks. All the way down to the uh, level with the ground and stuff like that. That one looks a little bit higher, but I think that's actually... Is that too high? Are we at Y15 here? Okay, we need to get rid of this. That's my bad. Uh, the doorway and stuff like that doesn't line up with the floor, but that's also because I plan to make this floor fairly thick. Probably going to be about uh, five layers thick for the floor. I want to give myself more room than I really need in order to add as much depth into the floor as I possibly can. So before I move into the towers, I would like to kind of lay out a little bit of the footprint of where the floor is going to be going. A little bit of a segue. We're working on some really cool forced perspective things over here. So from over here, it actually looks like those are small, like little bees out of the corner of your eye. And I would like to do a little bit of forced perspective, making these small bees look like they're flying out of hives from a distance. From up close, they don't look like anything special. And I mean, it is nighttime, but I can show you guys exactly how it's done. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward how these things are done. But I plan to make these into like little miniature hives. So if I can come over here, actually, let's, uh, let's position one back here a little bit. And then we can throw this guy back here. And then all these bees start to look like they're starting to fly out of an area. So we can come into here. Put the, the yellow right there. Whoops, not there. We'll pop the yellow down there. Then we'll throw in our lights. And by lights, I mean glass. And then we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to get these guys. First try, yeah. And then we'll put the lichen behind because the lichen actually looks a lot like the veins on the bee. So we'll just kind of throw these guys back here. 
And then I'm interested to see what this looks like at night. But I think this looks like a really cool scene of a bunch of bees in the background. As we fly away, you'll see like a little bit more of them. Of course it's raining right now, of course. But it looks like a bunch of bees flying out of there. And I think that looks spectacular. And I mean, with shaders, it actually looks pretty damn cool with the uh, with the lichen behind there, despite it being an absolute storm out here. But looking behind me, they look like bees. You can kind of see the wings a little bit better back there. It's very, very cool. So putting that concept a little bit on hold, I've done a little bit of the mapping out of where the first room is going to be. So this is going to be kind of like the throne room for bees. Uh, I've done a little bit of centering here to kind of see where everything's going to be lining up and seeing exactly how to do my walls afterwards. And then I'm going to be pushing everything back here beyond the uh, beyond the andesite over to the yellow terracotta where we're going to be like opening things up a bit. But I need to start working a little bit more on these towers so I can incorporate more of these little like bee designs where they're like kind of like flying out type deal. So we need to kind of do a little bit more of this on all of these guys now. Now we've got the outline of all of our roofs here. Going to start filling it in with a little bit of blue. I need to drape down those there a little bit too. And then we can start incorporating our light. But I want to start progressively working them up a bit better so I can start working out the rest of this castle. Uh, if I were to take a little bit of a random guess, I'm going to say that we definitely don't have enough uh, lapis in order to do this build here because there's a lot more roofs that I need to build up here. So we're going to definitely have to be trading for more of that. Uh, wool, wool won't be an issue at all. But let's go fill this thing out now. Well, with all said and done, I'm just under two stacks of lapis, which is definitely not going to be enough for the center roof. So at least we made it through this phase. Now to come by and place our trap doors over here so we can hide those lights like we did over there and to place the end rods in place so we can bring out the towers a little bit better. And then while we're up here, we'll place down a little bit of our yellow concrete as well on a little bit of an overhang here. So we should be able to just bring this stuff down and then at night, this will look epic. Well, we're getting a little bit more of the towers done up today, which is super awesome, but we have ourselves a wandering trader. So you know what that means. It means we get to see exactly what we get today. All right, what do we got? We have the Ender Dragon Woman. We have the Netherrack Creature. Oh, we got a lot of cool ones. We have a cake book. Power, oh, we got power armor. Nice. We have uh, Kratos from the, the God of War. And we have a brown mushroom bag. Looking at these guys, there's nothing really special that I want to check out there. But time to lay these things out. Don't mind the tornado in the background. Don't mind the tornado in the background. All right. So, power armor from Fallout. If you guys have uh, watched that, I think this looks awesome. This is supposed to be like a T60 power armor. We have cake books, which I think turned out phenomenal. So a little bit something with a little bit more color to it. We have Kratos. So that's really cool. I thought this was a very well done skin. Brown mushroom bag to go along with our red mushroom bag. They have the, the share the, like the same texture and stuff. And then we have this netherrack creature that I thought was really cool with like the crown and stuff like that. And then for, I guess for those of you guys who haven't seen it, this is the ender dragon woman, which I thought was a really well done head. But that is the selection that we got from that guy. I knew the day was gonna come, but we're officially out of lapis. I got this one over here done. It was almost two stacks of lapis, but I'm gonna, going to need probably another two, four, six more stacks of lapis, give or take, in order to finalize this entire uh, like roof up here. Not to mention the roof that we got to do over here as well. That's going to uh, extend backwards. So we're kind of in trouble now. And with a little bit more villager trading, that brings us up to 82,000 villager trades since we started this project. So that's lovely. But I think we finally have enough lapis in order to potentially finish what we started today. Let's hope. And with all those towers in the back finally done, it adds a little bit more depth to the whole castle area here as we fly on in here. There will be other towers and stuff like that too, but we actually made it by with all of our lapis. Now time to start framing out the windows so we can put our honeycomb patterns on the center here like we do over there. Time for the glass now. So what we're going to be doing is obviously the checkerboard pattern with the brown and the orange going all the way up. I think it'll look really cool just like that. I think it gives off that really cool like honeycomb pattern for, the, for that. 
And then of course we'll have like our bees like kind of flying out of these like honeycomb patterns. These are supposed to be like symbolic of being like hives. And there you have it. We're finally done a little bit with the towers in place here. Got all four of them. Didn't run out of resources, not once. Yeah, right. Uh, anyways, I got a little bit of those guys going on. I still need to bring up all the end rods. There's still a lot to work to be done. A lot of detailing, a lot of texturing, all that sort of stuff. But I'll focus on that later because I have a lot of stuff going in the middle of this castle that I need to start working out first. So one of those things is going to be this floor right here. Got a little bit of this carved out. This floor is also going to tell me exactly where my walls need to go as well. So probably putting the floor in place is probably going to be our best bet uh, before we start figuring out where our walls and stuff are going to go. There you have it. We got a little bit more of the end rods in place here, lighting up the central point of the castle. I want to start getting a little bit more of this floor done and start mapping this out for the next part of the castle. But of course, before we take on the inside of the castle, we're going to have to grab some resources from the storage room. And thankfully for us, the resources that we're going to need are actually going to be pretty easy to obtain. We're going to need a little bit of orange terracotta and yellow terracotta we'll need a little bit of glass and a little bit of brown and black terracotta as well i got a little bit of a floor design that i'm going to be putting inside of here we'll see how it turns out i'm gonna to have to try to see exactly where the middle point is i got everything kind of like mapped out but i'm pretty sure uh this should have a double center i think so I might have to make things a little bit bigger. I'm not too sure exactly. But before we start working on this, I'm going to need to create a little bit of a floor. So I think I actually want to have the floor in line with the castle, of course. So I'm going to come around here and I'm going to build myself a little bit of a platform in order to put my floor on, which should hopefully make this whole process much easier. Now that we have a platform in order to build on, I can actually get rid of my guideline here. So I'm going to keep the yellow here just so I know exactly where the floor design is going to be going. It kind of gives me a little bit of a frame of reference there. So we can get rid of this. And I know what you guys are probably wondering. Why did I build a fl uh, this platform up higher than this platform? Well, later on down the road when we're building out our floor, we're going to be able to add depth into our floor. And just having this small gap right here is going to make that process much easier. Getting a bit more of the floor design done here as we check on in. It's going to be perfectly lined up with the doorway. So hopefully we'll be able to see the actual floor design as we fly on in. But we got ourselves a wandering trader. So you know what that means. Are you freaking kidding me? He spawned underneath the platform. I didn't know that was possible for wandering traders. But anyways, let's see what he's got for us. Red button. We have Baldy. That's a uh, he's a I think this is um. There's a guy on the uh, on the Twitch channel. His name is uh, Gamerge. Looks just like him. We have the Thrash Lantern. We have the Robot. Astronaut. And the Mushroom Skeleton. So you guys have seen most of these in the last episode. But let me show you guys the new ones. Lay them out over here. We have this really cool lantern right here. We have a really cool button. And last but not least, Baldy. Wow. Gonna finally baby rage. With that out the way, let's get back to work. Almost done with the floor here. And you can see that it's nicely inside of this doorway, making a little bit of a time lapse for you guys as I struggle with the colors. But it's a little bit of the Virgo B. If you guys know, you know. But I'm trying to do a little bit of a thing right here where I'm trying to get it to a point where this makes sense. So maybe we get rid of this. This guy goes, I want to go with a brown bee. I'm probably also going to fade in a lot of this brown as well. And then maybe even fade in a little bit of the black. So there's not such harsh lines and stuff like that going on here. So maybe by coming along and doing stuff like this, uh, potentially. And then coming over here and then doing this. Kind of doing the same thing on both sides. It might be more beneficial to kind of bring this guy down as well. And then I've got a little bit of brown up in there too. But this is kind of where we're at right now. But as soon as we're done doing this, I get to build up the sides of the walls here. I might move where this roof is right here. I'm probably going to bring this guy out a few more blocks just to allow for us to have a little bit more space in here. And then I'm going to bring it all the way back to around this point where I'm actually going to start expanding out. 
like I said. More importantly, I kind of need to know where this whole thing is, like the sun. Because I have something big planned that's going to be going into the center of this room above the bee. You know when you build something and you didn't actually intend for it to happen? We kind of did that here. This kind of looks like a hardcore heart wearing a crown. So I kind of want to get in there and start adding some gold. Which I think will look really nice. Definitely didn't uh, mean for this to look like a crown here. So I was think thinking about like alternating some stuff. Adding a little bit of gold. Because I think the gold actually kind of goes really well with this whole thing. You can come across here. Maybe add that a little bit. And make a like a little bit of a crown for the bee. That kind of looks like it. Maybe this one comes down just a smidge. Like that. Let's see what that looks like. I think that's really cool. Let me know what you guys think inside the uh, the comment section down below. But I think that actually looks really nice. Kind of adds a little bit of something to the bee. We could incorporate in incorporate. We could incorporate more throughout the bee. But I think that's actually really subtle, and I like that a lot. Nice. I want to start filling out a little bit more of the floor around here, and we need to get underneath these wings because obviously that's not going to be stone. I'm going to be going with probably a dark terracotta underneath the black glass and then we're probably going to go with a light blue terracotta potentially underneath this maybe some warp wood might look really nice to kind of give it like the veins of the bee i'm not 100 percent sure we'll try out a couple different things so oh and maybe like a white terracotta over here but i'm going to work in a couple other little blocks underneath there got myself a couple things for underneath the wings but lapis is also a big resource that we need and these guys are ready to trade, so you know what that means. All right, so I have a couple things that I want to try down here, and I'm thinking underneath these guys, we could potentially use a little bit of warp wood, but I'm not really sure what I want to put underneath the the blues. So we're going to try out a couple things here. If I can even see which ones are different, like I can barely tell what's blue and what's not blue down here. I'm sure you guys definitely can't because there's no way you guys can see that. No way, not on YouTube. I think something like that potentially. And then I want to see what this thing looks like, because these kind of look like the veins inside of a uh, inside of a wing. Could look neat, could look stupid. Um, but if it looks stupid, then it's Twitch chat's fault. Hold on, I did miss a block, but let me see what this thing really looks like. I can land up here. Hold on, I'm gonna cut this all out. Yeah, I don't know about that. I use my expert ingenuity. I use my flipping. All right. I use my expert ingenuity. And I was able to come up with something I thought looked really nice. So now we're going to do that on this side. Yeah, going to be ice blocks on the blue. Like this. So I think this will really make the wings pop as much as possible. Um, I think that's all blue. And then we've got the mushrooms that are going to go underneath the white. Which I think is a nice little blend. It's not uh, nothing too crazy. And then we've got our light blue terracotta that's a little bit purpley. It's not too dark. I don't know what that is. I think that's, uh, I think that's supposed to be black glass. So we'll be able to come in here. And just fill that out and pop that there that guy goes there and let's see what they both look like now nice and while we're on the topic of doing pixel art and stuff like that i also changed up a little bit of the spider added a double hourglass to this guy which is i didn't know that black widows some of them actually have a double hourglass one on the bottom of its abdomen and one on the top of their abdomen and i think this looks really cool for bringing out the spider a little bit more so we can just visibly see it just a just a little bit more adds a little bit of life to it didn't mean to switch on my elytra there now that we have our center point down there on the floor these walls right here i'm actually going to push these guys out about four or five blocks to give myself a little bit more room to work with because as we work our way inside of here i'm going to push these walls back and then they're going to come out and then i want to try to line up another wall back here 
with like kind of like the center point of this so I could really bring it out and open up the castle. So now that we've moved out this uh, roof peak a little bit here, we're going to be filling this all in with lapis. But since we don't have lapis, I think what we could be doing is we're going to be alternating the chiseled blocks up in here so I can start bringing together this layer of the uh, of the wall. That way I can kind of visualize this a, a little bit better because there's obviously going to be a space in here. I'm just hoping that everything kind of fits normal, like fits like how we want it to fit. So I have to go all the way around here and then we're going to build it all the way up. We now have that central tower kind of built up a little bit without all the quartz pillars because we're kind of down bad for that. But that's what we're going to be utilizing the uh, Villager Trading Hall for, as always. I think we're upwards to 100,000 Villager Trades. But looking at this thing now, we got a little bit of a box. I'm not really sure exactly where we're going to be ending off on up here. And there's obviously a lot of stuff that's going to be incorporated into the box. Like we're going to have like obviously windows and all that jazz. My bad. Totally just zoomed in on the back side of my head. Um, anyways, I got this thing laid out got my gravel in place that's also where we're gonna put another like additional wall that we can progressively start working towards so i might actually like bring this out a little bit on like a like diagonal if as long as it doesn't interfere with that tower there and then we got that but this entire wall over here is going to be lapis this one over here is going to be lapis and i can tell you this much right now we don't have enough lapis while we figure out our lapis situation, because we're hardcore struggling for that, I'm starting to do a little bit of a design up the top here. I'm thinking like doing like some sort of like crown to kind of like hold the sun in place would look really, really cool. But we got ourselves a wandering trader, so you know what time it is. Now to only find the guy. If I can find him kicking around here somewhere, hopefully that is um, easier said than done. Of course. In the spider pit, because you know how it is. These guys have no self-preservation. Always buy the creepers and stuff, so. Let's see what we got. Ooh, we got a Valkyrie. Really cool. We have a wax seal of a red moon. We have Doug. That's uh, one of the Ascended. And we got a Parrot. I think these blocks are really cool blocks. Um, and then as terms of for these guys... I'm not interested. All right, time to take a look at what we got going on here. We have a Valkyrie. I thought this head looked really cool. Love the blue hair. We also got ourselves a uh, a parrot. I think this one's supposed to be placed on the side or something like that. It's supposed to be a parrot on a micro block type deal, or maybe it's not supposed to be placed on the side. Hold on, that looks kind of looks kind of jank. I thought that was really cute. Uh, these really cool micro blocks of like the crest, like they're wax seals. I think this looks awesome. And then we have Doug. His ascension head finally. And those are the picks for today. That was, I realized it's map Monday. So you know what that means? I got to go re up uh, all my maps and stuff like that. So this is where we left off. This is week one, week two, and then week three of the project. Time to update to week four. Okay, this time before I mess it up, like last week, I'm gonna duplicate all the maps. Make sure that we have a duplicate of this and then we're gonna lock them all up and then we'll see exactly what we got going on here. There is a big sad story that's about to happen here and you guys will notice in a minute. Um, super sucky stuff. Put our extra maps up in here. Try to keep them all in order so I don't like lose track of where we're at. Like that. And then we just pop them in here and then these guys should all be locked. Last can go back. All right, time to see what we got going on here. So we'll start from the bottom up. It, sees, uh, it seems as if my shulker monster has grown a little bit from last week. It's a smidge. That is the unfortunate thing. The fact that we can't see the flipping bee on the map. That super sucks. Ugh. But there it is. This is week one. Granted, I only had two days to make that map. Week two. Week three. And then week four. Done. 
that's a pretty that's a pr that's a pretty substantial change i've got like the the whole um uh what is that a hexagon 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 yeah i got the whole hexagon there you can see a little bit more of the detailing done obviously we got the uh the entire floor almost ready to go in there oh we added our spots wait uh what the heck's that hold on is that dirty yo what's going on with this map the hell I feel like i need to clean it that guy glitched uh-oh all right that's why we make duplicates that way i could take this map and then we can just uh you know hit it with a cheeky little boom uh get that out of here put our duplicate back in there and before we lock this guy let's actually make sure that it's uh rendered in over here because it's ridiculous come on man oh um and then we'll pop those into there boom done i'm a professional what is that no no that, that, that's fine that's fine yeah, yeah and with this little bit of lapis we now officially hit 1.5 million villager trades which puts us just over a hundred thousand villager trades since we started this project a couple weeks ago but with over a hundred thousand villager trades we still don't have enough lapis so we might actually have to lose a little bit more wool on this one but i'm gonna start filling out the roof now i think it's really gonna make it look a lot better not too shabby i think we're getting places right now check it out so adding a little bit more detail to this also did a little bit more of the lapis in behind here bringing out a little bit more blue i do plan to put in some more towers it's not just going to be the square bit in the middle and we're also like i said we're going to be bringing out this back bit here and there's going to be some additional towers going in place but i got a little bit of a thing going here it looks really nice at night you have a nice like warm glow and these little cutouts that we put in here and we pretty much got a good portion of the roof done so that's nice but guess what yeah you guessed it we got ourselves a wandering trader dude another one we've been incredibly lucky uh during these youtube episodes so i don't know what the heck's going on around here uh but we got this guy undiny i'm not sure who that is we have a hay bale we have a fairy in a jar we have wheat uh we have the incredible hulk and we have our ringtail slime everything else after that eh mid but well, let's take a look at what we got going on here so i don't really i don't really play a whole lot of undertale but i know this individual is from undertale looks like it's a one layer skin oh no it's got a little bit of thing back there not too bad i got wheat that also looks like cheese we have ourselves another hay bell. Just a little bit of a variation for Olivia. She's uh, part of the Twitch channel. No, she's not going to be happy with these guys. And then we got ourselves a fairy in a jar, which kind of reminds me of Navi. And if you guys know, well, you know, I'm Link. So I felt like I absolutely had to make that happen. But that's the new lineup. Everything else you guys have seen in previous episodes. And while we're at it, I guess I'll be bringing this guy back home too, since we're out of that again welcome to my second home so in today's video wait no that doesn't make any sense because i'm not starting a new video all right we back we back i'm gonna be buying a bunch of uh lapis over here we're gonna be doing a bunch of uh quartz pillars a bunch of quartz i'm sure you guys are fully aware of that because we are completely out of resources for our castle now this is a little bit of what i have going on here but while we're doing that back and forth, I'm also going to be updating some Hall of Fame plots. So I'll, I'll show you guys a couple snippets on those along the way. All right, those Hall of Fame plots that I said I was going to get to today are now officially done. So we redid Minnie's plot to look more of like a library with a little like shelf up in here. I think it looks really nice. She's one of my moderators. We come up here. You guys can get a little bit of a better look. We did have to like do a little bit of uh, ingenuity to make things work here. But this is her Hall of Fame re uh, redemption thing looks slick and then the other one just down here was for dj the dude who wanted to have a little bit of a cave design this is actually the one that we're making uh the ascension for sorry i got completely lost for words but this is uh the king of freaks literally the spider ascension 
wanted a little bit of a cave design so we put this together but yeah those are the new hall of fame additions speaking about new additions we got ourselves a new wandering trader so let's go see if we can go find him we're not going to talk about how long it took me to find this guy anyways let's get into it what does he got for us we have a flag doctor we have a minor kirby we have a crocodile miner we have a japanese lantern that's really cool we have a wax seal of a sword we have power armor and a bottles of wine i thought this was really cool all right before i suffocate let me show you guys like doctor bottles of wine which i thought these ones would be really cool to decorate like little bits and pieces of like uh, our restaurants and stuff we have the japanese lantern which i think looks uh spectacular you guys have already seen that guy we have kirby with like a little minor helmet on and then the last but not least we have our sword they did the best uh it looked better on the site ain't gonna lie to you but it looks pretty cool there's the sword and i think that's pretty much all of it so yeah well it's been about twenty-five thousand trades later and i think we actually have enough resources to potentially make it through the day today so i got a little bit of lapis i have a little bit of this over here cooking for that and then i was even able to repair up some of my tools along the way but gonna head over to the castle and i want to try to map it out a little bit more obviously we've got a lot of work to be done check this out got a little bit more of our roof done here i'm running out of lapis i'm gonna stop complaining about it because i'm sure it's getting pretty annoying over on youtube uh got this guy coming out here got this guy coming out here gonna be carrying this stuff down and working out the backside on here and then we're gonna start putting in our towers and all that stuff but a little bit of an update bruh all i gotta say desperate times lead to desperate measures i'm gonna be actually fortune threeing like all of our lapis that i basically have in the world bruh almost four freaking shulker boxes of lapis i should have did this way earlier we're thick with it rich all right almost half a box i think exactly half a box of uh of lapis which is awesome that will actually last us a decent amount of time moving forward all right so got a good portion of the front of this uh, castle done now check that out look at that facade boom that's a whole lot of lapis that i don't want to talk about i think about seven thousand ish i haven't done the walls yet but let me show you guys a couple things so we got this little bad boy right here got some birch kicking in here it's gonna be a big door obviously if you haven't weren't able to already know that we're gonna have like a big door over here nice little balcony so nobody falls off because you know safety first we got ourselves just a plain little floor in here but that's not where all the magic happens i got something to show you guys and down here don't look at all the roof i haven't finished yet down here so what i have planned moving forward as we walk into here i'm going to build a doorway i think this doorway is going to be completely open because i want to be able to see the floor and stuff I want to make archways coming through here and I want to make the interior of this place look like a greenhouse. So a little bit of a botanical garden inside of the castle. So we'll have like flowers and some greenery and we'll make like the top look like there's like glass up there with like a little bit of like sun peeking through. Like we'll create like a cool effect where we'll build a, uh, a greenhouse within a castle. Wow. I know crazy huh uh and then as we move move our way back here we'll have a archway right here that leads outside or we'll have like a, a, a like a staircase that kind of like wraps this way and that will be on all sides so we can have like an outside garden as well and then back here i've got something big planned but i can't tell you guys what that is yet because you know your retention and stuff you know we're on to episode six and the castle is really shaping up now 1.21 is officially out but i haven't updated yet but best believe me when we do we'll be going hard over on twitch doing a subathon and stuff like that unfortunately by the time you guys probably see this episode that subathon will probably be done but anyways that brings me into today today we're going to be building up the castle and bringing it up to the next stage and that stage is yep you guessed it the interior and the exterior walls so we're gonna be hopping on over there and i'll show you guys exactly where we're at with the castle i think we're ready to take the castle into the next stage here i've got a bunch of things mapped out over here on the roof and stuff 
some of these are going to be towers that are going to basically expand all the way up so i got a tower over here got a tower over here and i believe i have a tower over uh over here as well just to kind of add a little bit of variation to our roofs and adding more towers but more importantly we have the interior mapped out right here so you'll see that i got a little bit of a thing going on here i had to like kind of shorten it out a bit that way we were able to build these walls up obviously you guys know this is going to be a little bit of a greenhouse vibe inside of here and i think that's going to look absolutely fantastic and then working on up here you guys can see we got a little bit of our balcony in place i think this works really really well and then we can start building up the interior here as well we're going to be building up these walls here and then i would like to arch the walls and have a little bit of a glass kind of like greenhouse roof here so i'm thinking if we start building up these walls on the inside we can start actually seeing how that is and another important thing to know is i actually got a huge amount of the lapis done on the roof here so check this out if we fly all the way up you can see that we got the entire roof all lapis out which looks absolutely fantastic but i'm gonna need even more lapis because we're gonna need to add them to our towers and such what do you call a chicken stirring at lettuce chicken caesar salad all right i think i got all the quartz walls done got my gamma absolutely cranked right now so you guys can actually see what's going on in here so i think next up i gotta build up the floors we're gonna build the botanical garden in here got all these walls in place upwards of eighty thousand uh, quartz pillars now all time not just for this build but yeah this was uh this was quite something so after this i'm gonna start like bringing out a little bit more of the curvature in here adding some circles some really cool domes but before i do that i want to start working out my windows and my balconies and stuff like that so for like little areas like this so i don't know if there's a way i can actually land up here let me go through this way so we come through here we have these really cool like little triangle dealios right up in here if i bring this out and we make like these like half moon kind of balconies i think that would look really really cool and obviously bring a little bit more to the walls here we also got to do up a little bit of these things and those things and i got some more towers going in place but those are the main walls okay so one of the resources that we're going to need for today is going to be copper and i'm thinking that we're going to go into this hole here and we're going to see how much copper we can come out with because i'm not actually sure exactly how much copper we have but i want to have some more for the update anyways wish me luck we'll see how much uh, copper we can actually get down here also it looks like we're going to find lapis down here too got a little bit of ores i think this will actually be enough copper for today i'm gonna go throw this inside my super smelter got a little a uh, little bit of diamonds a little bit of lapis as well we're gonna head on over to the drown farm and we're gonna see how much copper we can get from over there no mistakes were made i just threw my copper ores in here without realizing i should have flipping uh did a fortune three on this thing uh-oh i'm losing copper by the second okay well with that out the way and I'm stalking, uh, you know, yelled at by Twitch chat. I'm going to actually smelt this now and hopefully make a little bit more, a little, a little bit more profit this time. Uh, this is a tunnel you don't see too often. On our way to the drown farm, hoping that it's in one piece because I honestly don't remember the last time I was at the drown farm. So there's a possibility our drown farm might be burned down. Who knows? It is burned down. I flipping knew it, dude. I think I left this place because I was under attack. I need to put a wall up because this place is ridiculous over here. But yeah, got to rebuild that. Big sad. Also, these guys, they don't really like me all that much. So, you know. Oh, which year is this guy from? Uh, 2023. Oh, damn. All right. Welcome to my drown farm. We're going to see how much copper we can get over here. Um, I think everything's working. I got everything like kind of closed off. Got these little dudes in here and stuff. You can tell I was here during Christmas. And by Christmas, I mean Halloween. To kind of get these guys to go. But uh, let's see how much copper we can get from in here. And for those of you guys who are wondering where this uh, drown farm is from, it is a Redstonia design. This is where I get all my tridents, as you guys can see. Uh, I think it gets me about 17 tridents per hour type deal. And then obviously a lot of uh, Nautilus shells and whatnot. So I don't know how much copper it's supposed to give us, though. So I guess I'll be over here swiping away all right so that's all the copper that we got i only got like one more trident out of that but i don't really think this is a very effective way of getting a lot of copper i don't know let me know what you guys think 
uh you guys think is the fastest way to gain copper in the world well on the plus side we're now fully stocked up on trident so that should last me a little while and in terms of copper i've got a bunch of miscellaneous stuff it also looks like i actually have some ores in here as well but i'm probably going to take all this copper and then everything that we have inside of the smelter so it looks like i got a little bit more fortune threeing to do Got a bunch more copper here gonna send this guy off i guess i must have i stood on the pressure plate apparently that just sends off the mine cart that's actually kind of good to know i'll put this stuff over here oh this one's on still so we'll turn that guy off and yeah i know i need a better system to be able to load this stuff up but for, for right now it's probably gonna be the scaffolds and probably a year from now there's probably still gonna be scaffolds back there so yeah you know Anyways, I digress. And you already know we're going to be taking that lapis with us as well. So hopefully we'll be able to finish off all the roofs, even though I've been saying that for probably the last five episodes. But, you know, check this out. Bam. Not too bad for a flipping Sunday, huh? Also, uh, happy Friday. And by Friday, I mean Father's Day. Uh, to those of you guys who are out there and it's Father's Day. I'm recording this on Father's Day, so... Don't mind me when I just say random days and stuff like that, because that's just a thing I do. And it looks like we have a bunch of copper now, but I don't think we're going to use that copper yet because I got some more in the base. All right, time to yoink all this. I think this will actually, I'm going to uh, probably oxidize this while we're over there as well. I'm just going to bring everything with me. Oh, maybe these things as well, because those could be like little sprinklers and whatnot. And I'm just going to load them up. And looking at all this copper, things are looking extremely uh, unorganized. So I think uh, we're going to have to expand our storage room here pretty soon for the new blocks in 1.21. And while we're in the area, since I'm not in 1.21, like I said, I don't have any of the actual oxidized copper. So I'm going to kind of place this stuff around here. Whoops, mess that up. Just so this stuff can oxidize while we work on our interior here. Time to start working on the interior of this place. First thing I want to do is I want to basically, whoops, I don't have a HUD. Uh, and so I want to start getting rid of this basically and I'm going to lower this floor probably about uh, three or four blocks down that way I can have the B ray here make it look like it's actually sticking up above the floor so we're going to do that so to bring a little bit more of this out I'm actually going to bring down the color of the B that way it actually looks like it's sticking out from the floor so we're going to kind of go around here and we're going to trace everything out that way we also we don't want to be able to see all this uh, this glass or this ice down here as well so i'm gonna start doing this and then we'll start up with the floor look at that thick b look at that anyways jumping on over here i've also carried down the walls a little bit more so i'm able to actually build the floor in here now i think we got something figured out here gonna be doing the honeycomb pattern going all the way through here and then we might do honeycomb we might do azalea i'm not too sure what's going underneath all right, now that we've got the honeycomb patterns in here, we're going to start to fill out the actual honeycomb. So I'm thinking about alternating the honey with the actual honeycomb. I think it'll look really cool, especially when the whole thing is completely filled out. So yeah, we're going to start doing that now. You know what me grabbing emeralds means? Yep, you guessed it. Wandering trader. Time to find this guy. He's somewhere around here. He'll be the first one that I think we've gotten in this episode. So let me see if I can try to find him or if he's going to be a pain in the neck. To oh, it's right there. Hello. Oh, no. I don't see the guy. Uh oh, two leads. No, I found him. He's way over here. I don't. What happened there? I just ran off. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Uh, we got an astronaut. Oh, what? That's a first. Uh, all right. All right. I don't know why we're getting two of the same blocks. I have no idea what's going on here. All right, let's see what these guys look like. So only two new ones here. We're looking at, what is this one called? The Ender Woman, which I thought looked really cool. And a different version of Tigger. I thought this one was a little bit better from the other one that I have inside the pack. This one's much nicer. All right, now that we got that out the way, check it out. I got a little bit more of the floor down here. A little bit of a progress update for you guys. Let me see if I can get up in here. Check it out. I'm trying to stay within uh, within the diagonal realm, but I don't think we're going to be... Um, I don't think that's going to be a possibility for long. I think once we get over to the point over here, things are just going to be uh, kind of random, you know? But let's go grab the honey so I can finish off this floor. 
now that we got the entire floor lit up and everything is done i want to glaze over this now with uh brown glass i think brown glass is gonna look really nice but i don't have any brown glass around here so i'm gonna go make some and we're gonna go make some brown terracotta but check it out Almost all of the copper that we've placed around the castle has been completely oxidized. And this has all been done in basically one stream. So I uh, wasn't expecting that. And well, a good thing for us is we have our proper brown dye farm in here where I don't think we'll ever have to worry about brown dye again. Behold, the bean farm. I'm not going to harvest all this because it actually takes forever to like replant, but it gives me about 2000 beans for harvest so i think uh i don't think we're gonna need i don't think we're gonna need brown dye for a while and you know when it comes down to terracotta i definitely have a lot of terracotta that i can convert so that won't be a problem glass on the other hand i'm not sure if i'm gonna have a whole lot of glass with me so i got a little bit of glass but i don't think it's enough we're gonna have to go over to our villager trading hall and see how much glass we can buy from our librarians now time to see if we have enough resources to cover the entire floor now. Well, it seems as if I have forgotten a very important step. Dying the glass before I got here. And we're back. All right, got myself some brown dye. Now I can actually create the brown dye before I go back to my floors. That way I can actually finish the floor because I know how to Minecraft. As a full-time Twitch streamer, there are some things that I have to deal with. One of them being trolls. Welcome to my moderator here, Amanda case in point thank you for looking like a doofus in other news i've got brown glass so i'm gonna start covering up all this thing so nothing actually works right here um that doesn't make any sense nothing never works out here anyways i think that actually looks really nice so i'm gonna do that so as you guys can see it was in fact not enough glass so yeah but i'm liking the look of it so far i think it gives it like a nice little like um hazy look on top of here and i think it goes really well with the bee itself we're gonna have to like light up the bee i'm thinking about maybe pressure plate or something like that and then over here maybe we'll use some other things but yeah we'll figure that out when the time comes we'll pop that guy there we'll do another round of trading all right now that we have all the glass placed on the floor things are looking awesome i also took the liberty of lighting up the bee basically so you'll notice that i've got a bunch of lights in here and we put some underneath the trap doors and by trap doors i mean pressure plates um so i think the bee is properly lit up but it's also monday so that means i gotta clean up all this copper so we can do map monday and we can see all the progress we've made throughout the week and with all the copper all cleaned up let's take a look at our maps here so this is when we first started the project week two week three week four and we're about to make week five, which I think is going to be a big one. Because as you guys can see, I didn't even have a castle. So this is going to be sick. Okay, we got our maps here. I'm just going to update our maps real quick. So I'm going to do a little uh, a little cheeky flyby. And uh, we're going to go put them up on the wall. I definitely don't have these in order at all. So now I kind of kind of figure out where things are at. So I think this guy goes right here. And then I've got this guy who goes down there. This guy, maybe right here. Um, this guy I think goes that doesn't look that doesn't seem right. Right there. Um, this, this is a this is a wild card. So I'm thinking up there. Uh this guy goes there. This right here. Don't look at that map. But bam. Look how sick the lapis looks. You can see like the, the different colors between the lapis and the wool and stuff like that as it goes through massive change since last week obviously we pretty much have the entire castle up now haven't done anything with the spider yet so this remains unchanged looks as if uh the shulker monster has grown up quite a bit since the last one but there's the updated map now with map monday out the way i want to start working on a little bit of the ceiling that's going to go on in here because it's not going to be a brown ceiling i'm actually probably going to bring this down by a few blocks and then i'm going to be creating a moss ceiling so i can do the uh the interior of the greenhouse and also do the other stuffs botanical garden stuff also we'll be able to like hide this type of stuff too so probably going to bring it probably going to bring it down to about three blocks i think we've got everything laid out now uh, this is where I plan to put my domes. So I've got a giant circle right here that I plan to bring up there. 
And I've also kind of like indicated that I'm going to be covering up this because I don't think this is going to go with the vibe here. So we're going to make our own pillars right here. We'll work on the door frame. We'll have another feature coming out of these walls over here. Uh, and the same thing back here as well, where we'll have like these circles are all like mapped out all along here. We have our features going along these walls. Now to bring these stone thingies up to the top, potentially using dark oak. Take a little bit of a mental break from the inside of the castle. And I got emeralds in hand. You know what that means? We got ourselves a wandering trader somewhere. So hopefully he hasn't died. We got him. Homie's on the roof. Totally would have fallen to death. Okay. What do we got? We got Winnie the Pooh. We got a wax seal. Oh, a skull. Really cool. Power armor. This dragon. And that guy. Honestly, there's only one new block here. And that's this guy, the Petunia Dragon. I think that's how you say that. But I think I got it. It kind of looks like a bird. Really cool looking block. But anyways, let's get back to the inside of the castle. Bam. We got spheres in place. Yes, spheres. Not balls, spheres. Anyways, we got ourselves a little bit of dome action going on here. So I should probably record that. No, I shouldn't keep that in the video, should I? Anyways... I'm going to be building up the domes here where we're going to have our glass and then we're going to build all those, all, all those up. I decided to get rid of these ones over here because I'm probably going to work it up into the area over there. Uh, now I got to work out a little bit of a curvature of the middle thing right here. And then I've got this guy over here that I need to work out. But other than that, making progress. But yeah, I'm going to go check out and see if we got any uh, dark oak slabs inside our storage room. Oh, we actually do have a good amount of dark oak slabs. Don't ask me why I have so much, but we have dark oak slabs. And before we actually get to utilize those uh, dark oak slabs, I was doing a little bit of work in here, laying out a little bit of the groundwork, but you could see, look at those. Looks in pretty cool, huh? I love the domes in here. Gives it a very earthy looking effect. I still have to do this guy and still got to do this guy, but I need to get myself some birch leaves in order to carry on with that. And I think we've came up with something that looks really nice here. So what I've done is I pretty much brought it all together here, even drooped it in a little bit more. You guys can probably see that I got like the fence post in place as well. So I plan to also bring down those fence posts so I can incorporate a little bit of light in here. We now officially have all of our stone, our, our mossy stone and our tough stone all placed up here. I'm obviously going to bring down a couple more of these. I need to build up the pillars. We're going to have water cascading from the roof, but this is kind of what we're going for here and if i turn my gamma all the way down and then kind of crank it back up you can kind of see a little bit of what we got going on here so this is starting to look more like a terrarium i'm gonna have leaves draping down as well and i might put like some really cool like beehives with some really neat bee elements in here as well but basically what i gotta do here is i gotta take this and i gotta carry it on over to this side so work you know because i thought i was playing a video game but really i'm i'm, I'm working I'm working, but I'm loving it. Well, that's the entire roof done and dusted. So we got this whole thing in place. I want to start making a little bit more color incorporate into this. I almost messed up my words there, but you guys will notice that we got like these guys. I want to start hanging some lanterns. I think some like nice little chains and lanterns would look really cool, but also some foliage, foliage as well. All right. I think we now finished the entire roof. Without all of the details and such, obviously I got a, quite a bit of lighting up to do. I'm going to be putting fountains in here, like I said earlier, but I think fundamentally this is exactly what I kind of want to go for when I'm going for the uh, ceiling that's going in here. A little bit more earthy. We got like the undertones of the lamps in here. I don't know if it looks different with shaders, so we can take a look at that. Oh, you can see the lichen. Oh, hmm, not a fan of the lichen. Also, you can see through honey blocks. Yikes. All right, now that we got the ceiling done here, you guys can see that we were starting to put in a little bit of the texture on the walls. There, there's going to be no windows going in here. But speaking of which, that means I'm going to have to put the windows and the archways in uh, here in a minute. We're going to have cascading waterfalls coming into little ponds right here. And then over here, I'm going to have a waterfall coming in here, waterfall coming in here. And then we're going to connect the water going all the way across. And we're going to build ourselves a bridge to kind of separate the two rooms. So we're going to have like this room and this room back here. And I got something big going on here, but I want to get the windows in place first so I can work around them. Today, I got a bunch of stuff planned. We're going to be taking on two new Hall of Fames and we're going to be heading back to the castle to build some really cool spiders. 
But before we do that, I'm going to have to go collect up a bunch of tough and a bunch of copper. So you already know where I'm going. Time to dig out a trial chamber again. This is the same trial chamber I've been digging out for quite some time now, but it's got tons and tons of tough and tons and tons of copper, obviously. So let's go ahead and start doing that a little bit so I can get what we need in order to do these Hall of Fames. Another major resource that we're going to need in order to make one of these is we're going to need about 900 item frames. So I'm going to be buying those periodically through our cartographers. And down here, I plan to put the Steampunk Hall of Fame right at the very end of the Dark Factory Hall of Fame. And you already know I'm going to be yoinking all the tough in here. So we're going to have to set up a beacon. And on the other side of the monument, we have another hole that we're working on. But I already have a beacon set up for this one. This one's going to be for Middle Earth. So I think we're actually going to start here because the other one's full of deep slate. And this one's already got a beacon, so I could be more lazy and I could just start digging away. So we're almost there. I need to have enough spots for about 30 plots. And while we're digging out our new Hall of Fames and everything, we're going to make sure that we're buying ourselves some item frames. I only have two cartographers that will sell me item frames, unfortunately, so I can only do 24 at a time, sadly. But hopefully we'll have enough by the time we have everything properly dug out. Who is John? Our item frame guy. Thank you, John. And who's this guy? Pedro. Pedro, Pedro, Pedro. No, we're not doing that. Anyways, yeah, about 24 at a time. So I could probably get 48 in a day or per cycle. I just have to wait for the clock to basically go on over. That way I can do another cycle, but I'm going to be here for a while. Speaking about Hall of Fames, I have started the Middle Earth Hall of Fame. And I think I've got a cool design that looks really neat going all the way down here. Got a little bit of a blue sky using the ice. And then we've got like the nice like archways. And I, I really like this palette right here. So time to basically do this like 30 plus more times. So yeah. All right. So I've got all the walls all the way down. I literally just got replay mod. So I'm not going to replay mod this stuff and do like some weird time lapse. But I'll do a weird time lapse or the next one after this, which will be steampunk and whatnot. But I got the majority of all the walls put up in place now. Now I'm going to start focusing on these pillars and getting some other things going together. All right. Now we've got all the entirety of this Hall of Fame basically built up. We got all the, the archways done, the little like things in here, but we're missing the item frames. So we're going to start adding in all the item frames. And then I think I could say we're pretty much done. One really cool fine detail that I did add was the Eye of Sauron over there using bigger armor stands, which is pretty cool. I'm hoping that will come to the new armor stand mod that I utilize, but I just are placing down about, what, 600 item frames? Well, we almost had enough item frames. We're going to need about another 18 item frames in order to finish this, but we almost made it. This is uh, pretty much every single Hall of Fame plot gets 15 item frames. And I think it was just shy of 600 item frames in here. I'm going to be doing a little bit of uh, potatoes and grass on the ground as well. So I'll be right back. All right, we're back. And this should be the very last one I want to do here. Now I'm going to basically come through here and I'm going to do all of the, the potatoes. I'm going to do a little bit of bone mailing. That's way too high. I want to do like the small grass basically. And then we'll put uh, like potatoes every once in a while. So like, like right here. Oh gosh. Well, hopefully we don't see that anyways, you know, got to have potatoes inside the Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, deal because you know, potatoes, potatoes are life around here. So I'm just going to kind of farm these up a little bit. So we'll just like plant a couple here and there, like in little patches and stuff. And now that we have all the item frames in place, there you have it. We are fully done. The Lord of the Rings Middle Earth Hall of Fame here. The only thing left to do is add people in here. But before I actually do that, I'm going to start building the Steampunk Hall of Fame. So I think we got ourselves a little bit of a template here. I got to do this guy on this side and go all the way down. But I basically cleared out the other side here. And I need to put the pathway in here, all the logs and stuff like that. So I think that will make for a really good time lapse. <laughs>
I hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse. We have one last thing to do, but the time lapse is kind of funky with it. I built a little bit of a ceiling right here. And I think this looks awesome. We just have like the orange uh, frog lights in behind the grates here. We want to kind of keep it very rustic. So this is what I've come up with. I think it goes really, really well with the actual Hall of Fame and stuff. And then we'll just need to like close it off. And I've got a plan for that too. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set up all the scaffolds all the way down this tunnel. And then I'm going to start building up all this. So I'll see you guys in just a bit. And there you have it. We're completely done this Hall of Fame. So we can start incorporating people in here. I even edited it off a little bit, making it look like the train actually goes through. Something funny that would be cool to do later would be like a Wiley e. Coyote right here. Then maybe like a cheeky painting or something like that. I think that'd be really funny. But these are the plots fully done up now. So now we just got to get some people in here. We got the whole ceiling in place. Absolutely love the ceiling. I love the way that this Hall of Fame turned out. Let me know which Hall of Fame is your guys' favorite between the Lord of the Rings and the Subway Steampunk one. Uh, yeah, but let's move on to the next thing. And that next thing is going to be trying to find this Wandering Trader because I did have one spawn in when I was building up the Hall of Fame. So I got to figure out exactly where this guy is. Kind of puts it in perspective how like how long these Hall of Fames are. So let me see if I can find this guy. And we found him out here in the middle of the water. Love trading with wandering traders out in the middle of the water. Hold on. I don't have my emeralds either. Pause. Uh, hopefully this guy doesn't price gouge me, but hopefully we can get something cool out of this guy. We've already gotten that. Gotten that. That thing's still scuffed. Rainbow heart. Furnace. And an hourglass. So nothing, nothing new. I lied. Just in case I didn't show you guys, this is the new hardcore rainbow heart. Mandolin made this. Pretty, uh, pretty gosh darn snazzy, if you ask me. I guess it's also time to clean up our uh, our mess here, huh? Bring it back to the base. Get a bunch of name tags and also name tag everybody in here. So let's do that. And for those of you guys who are ever wondering where all my levels go, basically, in hardcore, is pretty much from naming every single one of these things. So this is everybody that's going to be going into our... Lord of the Rings Hall of Fame. And then down here is going to be everybody's going to be added to my Steampunk Hall of Fame. I won't showcase them right away. I'll let them get all dressed up before I show them on YouTube. Speaking of dressing things up, I completely revamped our iron farm. It's nothing pretty yet, but we did manage to get rid of our old iron farm facilities here. I do have a rare zombie up in there and then a named one up there. Got rid of all the pods here, which is super sad. Down here, I actually managed to build ourselves a brand new iron farm that I think gives us a... I don't know what the rates are exactly yet, but it's nothing pretty. It's nothing uh, good to look at or anything like that, but it's functional. So we're not without an iron farm, which is super nice. We also have an auto crafter down here that will auto craft all the iron into actual blocks and then put them in block form down here. So I'm going to let this basically run throughout the entire stream today. And I'm going to see how many iron blocks that I can basically get on a normal, normal stream. While the iron farm is doing its thing over there, I'll be doing my thing over here. And that is taking on a triple, no quad, quad spider spawner down in here. So let me explain what we got planned down here. So we have our four spider spawners right here. I want to use the potion of weaving as well in order to kind of uh, also make cobwebs down here as well. But I'm going to be digging out the entire area down here. That way the spiders can't crawl up any of the walls. And I want to bring them into a, like a central location. That way I could farm them up. So let's get to digging and let's see what we could do with this whole space. Okay, so now that we got the entire area completely dug out, I'm going to start removing some of the torches. I have these potions of weaving right here. I want to see what happens once I fire this up and splash all the spiders with weaving. I want to see if we get like a ton of spider webs, but... Let's go ahead and like just knock out all these torches now. We should get like a, a decent amount of spiders kind of going. Now I just got to get up to the platform. So I might need a minute to do that. Uh, it seems like some of the spiders do get caught off in the distance, but a lot of them do start tracking me and they start coming over here. So I'm going to kind of like let this build up. I don't really know what's going on there, but I do plan on adding some water streams to help like combat this a little bit so let me wait for these guys to keep coming in i don't know if they're affected by the mob cap by any means and this whole area will be far darker than what we got going on here but the main test that i want to go with is this so i hit those guys with the weaving and what happens 
when I start killing them. Oh, dang. Oh, that's a lot more than I thought we were going to get. Okay. Uh, I just got to get my way out of here. Hold on. That's a way more than I thought. Okay, time for the real test. How many cobwebs did we actually get from that many spiders? Because I know we definitely got a lot of string. So I'm just going to farm this up real quick. I, I don't know how I feel about the new sh cobweb sound. How do you guys feel about the new cobweb sound? Okay. So well over a stack. That's that one little run right there brought us up to 43 cobwebs. Nice. I think one awesome thing about these guys is these guys scare spiders. So we're going to push these guys into the hole and we'll be able to basically breed them up and utilize them as a big mechanic of how this spider farm is going to work. So now just time to get him in here. So I have my slow. F uh oh. Hold on. I got to get them closer to the hole. I got my slow falling potion. I'm ready to go. So I just don't want them accidentally falling in without the slow falling effect. Otherwise, we're probably going to lose some armadillos. He looks good. And... He looks good. Nice. That makes three armadillos, which is pretty crazy. I don't know what the range is for one of these guys, but if we could scare all the spiders into a central hole, which I'm going to try to line up right here... Then we can make like a really cool like weaving farm. Okay, so we now have a little bit of the walls in place here. So this is going to be the actual spider pit. Obviously, I got to put the floor in place and then the armadillos. On this side, I want to build a little bit of a laboratory with a viewing window looking in here with a really cool lore. But emeralds in hand, you know what that means. We got ourselves a wandering trader. So hopefully we can get something new here. Please. Oh, that's new. We got Licky Lick. No way. Uh, we got Harley Quinn. We got a witch hat. Pile of scrolls. Red button. And a hay bale. But if you guys watch Pokemon, then let me see if I can put it over here. Then you know what that is. That's Licky Lick. But time to build the floor here. And well, after a seven and a half hour long stream yesterday, which is our normal day, we got about nine about 12 stacks of iron i took a little bit from this the other day but i'd say that's fairly decent kind of hard to gauge because it's baking into a full block but iron farm's working and well about a day and a half later finally have something that's actually functional so let me show you guys a little bit how this thing works so it's really cool we have the armadillos to scare the spiders on in here we have apparently i missed that oh wait no i didn't turn off all these lights let me turn down the mob sounds because this is absolutely insane. So bring it down to like, I don't know, five. Um, I did kind of expand this area down here, but I have the all lays that are going to kind of give me my string and such. But there's also something really cool I want to show you guys. Hopefully it works. So it gives us about 2,500 string per hour, give or take. But I got something really cool to also add to this deal. So by activating this water bucket, I'm now kind of pushing the spiders off of the platform. That way I can start harvesting all of the cobwebs. So I have all of my weaving potions right here. I'm going to let these guys kind of build up over time. And then we're going to hit them with the weaving potions. And I get something really cool to show you. And once we get a bunch of spiders basically built up like this, I release the button, grab my potion of weaving, let them all run towards the center here. And then I splash them. And look at how many cobwebs I'm going to get from just two potions. Two potions probably are not going to be completely necessary, but... And then I'm going to activate all these guys again. The all ace will be okay. They could basically tank the damage. I might make the area where all of the magma blocks are a little bit smaller just to kind of help with the lighting and stuff but let's see how much this actually gives us so two potions gave me 51 cobwebs honestly i could probably just use one potion because one potion before in my control test gave me 48 so technically only using one potion will give me about a stack almost 
one thing I will do is I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just to kind of help out with the light levels here. And then I got a really cool build that I want to build up here that I'll explain to you guys here in just a moment. So just let me kind of get in here a little bit. Hopefully I actually have enough black glass for this. I'm not sure if this actually affects the rates of the farm, but I want to do a little bit more testing. So that's a, that's a little bit of a smaller area. So let's test it out one more light. That seems to be the perfect amount of light. It doesn't like bleed on over to the spawners. I think this is actually nice. Seems like the good happy medium. I like this a lot. And with that test, with one potion, we got ourselves 50 cobwebs. So I'm going to go ahead and say one potion is all we need. All right. And as for this area, I'm going to be building up a little bit of a laboratory with a spider's den over here. So it's going to be like kind of like a trapdoor spider, like entrance into a laboratory where we're going to be looking into this chamber here, working on some gene splicing. What is gene splicing? Well, we're making spider bees. So we're combining spiders with bees. This is basically what this laboratory is all about. It's been long abandoned. Maybe this project went horribly wrong, but where these guys are going to be on their way to beehives to basically infiltrate the hive and to take over the hive eventually during the war between the spiders and the bees. There you have it. Spider farm is done. We built ourselves a little bit of a spider tunnel that goes into here, kind of like a trapdoor spider's den, and it goes all the way up to the surface. But here's the laboratory here. So we make all of our potions of weaving over here. We have ourselves these little cryo, I don't know what these things are called, but these little cryo thingies where we're developing the new spider bees so they can infiltrate the hive, like I said, and some of them actually got out, which I think is really cool. And then try to make it look really like abandoned and run down. And then right in here is the actual farm. But now that we have all the cobwebs, we can actually start using them over at the castle area. But before we do so, let me show you guys a little bit of the surface. I know this does look a little bit funky, but it's supposed to be the entrance to the spider's farm. I do plan to do a whole lot of terraforming in this area. So this area is heavily under development. I could actually start spreading out the candles throughout the skulk lands now if I want to, but I don't have a skulk farm yet. And we're officially back to the castle. I did a little bit of work, so don't get upset with me. Uh, anyways, we did this in a live stream. We got like a nice like cobweb right here. Looks really cool. I'm going to build a spider on top of that. Down here as well, I built a bunch of cobwebs like kind of coming up to the bridge. Kind of give it a little bit more of a dynamic shape and stuff. Oh, there's a wall there. Hold on. Uh, same thing goes with like that area over there and a little bit of an area over here. But today... We'll actually be working on the outside of the castle over here, the actual castle wall. So I built a big giant hole right here where we're going to have a big wolf spider breaking its way through the wall. So we're going to be building that organic today. And then I actually have to build up the staircases around here all throughout here. It's going to be like a nice garden, like nice topiaries and stuff. Hopefully I said that correctly. So we're going to have like nice flowers and stuff like that. But this is where I'm going to start introducing more spiders to actually build the bug battle. Fast forward a little bit, and we got ourselves a little bit of a spider going on here. It's going pretty well. Gave him some bristles on his little beard with his fangs. Got some little, like, pupils here with invisible item frames, some eyeballs. Got some legs. I'll show you guys the other side of this guy that we're slowly working on. We're doing, like, the markings of the wolf spider down the back. So now I got to take, like, this and bring it all the way back, basically. And then put some lighter browns and stuff like that in here. Kind of looking like a little bit of a tarantula. Which uh, I'm kind of a fan of. But I love the eyes of this guy. Because I think it really brings him to life a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit of an update on the spider. Check him out. Changed his mustache up a little bit. Gave him a little bit of bristles. Gave him some fangs. He's looking sick. Up and over here, we also have this. So he's got a little bit of a textured uh, body to him, but there's one really cool thing that spiders do. And this in particular spider, I think we can work something out here. So wolf spiders keep their babies on their back. I kind of want to see what this would look like. So um, let me see if I can plop that guy down like that. Maybe we'll plop that guy in like that and we'll give it some legs. 
And we've got mini spiders. This is probably the closest I could possibly get to small spiders and whatnot. But the idea behind this is like he's going to like basically infiltrate the castle by breaking through the wall. And the babies on its back, aka nightmare fuel, is going to be coming in here like pouring on in. I also have these guys right here, which is a micro block. So I could probably place a few of these guys like kind of like crawling down the arm. If that makes sense. So these guys could look like little like black widows, like coming down the arm of the spider type deal. So we could just play plop these guys in here, pop that. And one thing I really do want to check out. I know it's not map Monday, but I haven't updated the map in a hot minute. And I kind of want to see what this guy would look like on the map. And just like that, we got another map to add to the mix. So check them all out. You can see the development of the castles and the spiders in our new addition, the wolf spider, which I think looks awesome from up top. Holy cow. Could we just take that in for a second? Bruh. Love it. Oh, and then you can see like the black widow. We now have the wolf spider. I want to make an orb weaver, which I think in like an orb weaver back here would look kind of cool, like in the garden type deal. Cause I feel like that's where you would see an orb weaver, but I think that looks spectacular. On to the next thing. So we have our spider breaking in through the wall right here. Obviously, there's a lot of terraforming that needs to happen, but I want to build some really nice topiaries back here. So got a little bit of the pathway figured out. Going to start putting in some gardens and stuff like that. I would ultimately like to try and figure something out. I'm thinking like between these guys right here, the azalea and the flowering azalea. This could like be a cool like little border right here that we can border all of our pathways with maybe maybe we'll even mix in some of the uh the regular azalea so it's supposed to be a little bit more of like a manicured garden doing all of that and then on the inside here we could build like raised flower beds and stuff okay we now have a little bit more of the pathway figured out here i got myself a little bit of water where i plan to put a coral reef Along this wall right here, I got something to show you guys, which I'm kind of building up slowly. I'm going to be building an orb weaver right here. So I'm kind of mapping out how I want to make that happen. Obviously live on Twitch. But I got my legs coming in here. A little bit of the web design that's subject to change, probably. The body that I'm probably going to be putting in here. So I'm going to start working out the body of the orb weaver. And then I've got some other like really cool things to go along with this, but I really hope it kind of fits within this space. But uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I have a little bit of a tulip garden already showcased the wolf spider. I think like having a coral reef up in here would be really cool. And like having spiders like crawling up the wall over here, doing some really cool stuff, maybe even like a hive, some hives like working off of this. And I did all of the walls going all the way around here, the honeycomb walls. Uh, where I want to build up some more like moss trees, I think would look really neat putting some moss trees up here and like even bone mealing them. So I have a little bit of a grass. We have ourselves the coral fans here just to add a little bit of color and we've connected it to the actual build itself so I can walk in and out freely. I'm kind of planning to do a little bit of a sundial in the front here. I think a sundial would look really, really cool. And then we can get around to doing some other spiders, such as like a jumping spider, maybe jumping over towards the bridge and an harvestman spider, which I think would look really cool. Even though I know it's not actually a spider. I know you guys are going to be in the comments like, oh my God, Link, it's not a spider. They're insects. But, you know, I'm going to get back over to the orb weaver. Now we got a light bulb with legs. This is going to be the thorax right here and the abdomen back here the leg coming along down here and then i'm going to build out the leg back here and then we got a couple other little legs and stuff like that but this should help maybe visualize it a bit better there you have it i've got all the legs on the giant light bulb now which i think look awesome so i've got a little bit of a plan here I plan to connect the spider legs up to the wall, making it look like it's supporting itself up there. Also connecting it up to the tower there a little bit. And then I'm going to rebuild like a bigger web kind of going across up here. So this web behind the spider is probably going to get dismantled, which is okay. 
Uh, I didn't really like the look of it anyways, but I love the look of the spider. And here's just one more view of the spider as we fly in over top of the wolf spider. I think it's going to be a perfect center point towards the back side of the castle. So very excited to make this happen. And for the spider, I was thinking about using yellow terracotta, black concrete, and orange terracotta. I think these colors are going to go beautifully with the wall here and do a little bit of standing outness. Standing outness? I think it's going to stand out and work really well here. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Look how creepy that looks. I think this thing turned out absolutely fantastic. I used terracotta pots for the eyes and diorite for the walls. Keep calling them walls, dude. They're fangs. Fangs. Fangs, fangs, fangs. I'm not redoing that. Anyways, I think it looks so cool. Hope you guys like it. But that's an orb weaver right there. I'm going to have to put like the spider web in behind it, making it look like it actually has something going on for it. And then I've got another spider that I want to take on. And that will be the Harvestman that I was just talking to you guys about. And I know it's not actually a spider, but I think like having like the ability to walk underneath a giant spider. And I'm going to keep calling it a spider. Because I don't like them and they look like spiders. So they're very creepy, but I, I really like the way that this guy turned out. But anyways, time to build the web. Now that looks a little bit more natural with the web in behind there. Now it doesn't look like the spider's just dangling there, but I also built another spider. Well, lack thereof, I was already talking about this earlier in the video, but we have ourselves a harvest bin over here that I'm extremely happy with the way that this guy turned out with a bunch of fence posts and stuff. Put some candles on its back, give it a little bit of hair. Got the dragon heads for the eyes and the invisible item frames with some little fangs. And then we have the fence post coming all out here, which was quite a journey, but I love it a lot. His name is Dave Dangles. So he's even got a name. That's really cool. I'm um, filling in a little bit of the gap of the walls here. So I also put in, uh, if I can get around here, a little bit of this area here just to kind of take up a little bit more of that space because this was looking like a really flat wall. Wasn't very happy about that. So I pretty much just did it all the way through. And then I want to do something down here for this wall right here, just to kind of take up a little bit more of that space. I need to light up this area a little bit better to get rid of all these torches. So I'm going to probably going to use the moss carpet to hide a bunch of like frog lights back here. And then I got another spider plan for the front. So with the front facade of the castle, I would like to have a jumping spider looking like it's jumping from over here over to the bridge. So probably like mid jump, like right up in this little spot. So we can have like a jumping spider kind of like a little bit more of a dynamic pose. And then I would like to kind of address the front side of the castle a bit more because having just the grass and stuff, we need a little bit of help here. So we're probably going to do that. That side obviously needs some work, but we're working on things things are coming together but yeah just a quick little update on what i've been working on well i guess you could say we've been a little bit busy i terraformed the entire front of the castle with all the blossom trees and used a bunch of bamboo and everything like that and also built a bit of a jumping spider let me know what you guys think about the jumping spider this was probably the hardest look th this was most certainly the hardest spider i've ever had to do i spent seven hours trying to build this thing on a live stream and I'm still currently in that live stream. So this is what we got going on here so far. It's got the little derpy eyes. It's got the little fang here. It's got a dynamic pose where he's jumping over to the bridge, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. But moving forward for this whole deal, I'm going to be moving these maps inside of the castle in this particular spot. Let me show you guys where that's at. And I think that's going to be right here because we got a nice like blank spot inside the castle that I think all those maps are going to work out beautifully. So I've got all of this basically mapped out unintended. Anyways, we're going to have like that whole old deers old deal or ordeal going to have that whole ordeal. So you guys can actually see what's going on there. But before we do that, there's something else I want to do real quick.
And that's basically approaching the castle over here. You'll notice that we've done a little bit of the landscaping. This is a little bit of a walkthrough. Where the actual spider is jumping in from, though, I've got something that I want to do, making it look like the spider's actually coming in from something. But we got a bunch of these really cool, like, Black Widow spiders, like, coming out of, like, little crevices and stuff. Got the little, the P-redacted spiders up in here, you know? I think that's very beautiful. I was going to put a stream coming through here, but since this spider turned out a lot bigger than I anticipated, I kind of figured that this spider wouldn't be just jumping from, like, an area where trees are going to be chilling at and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach like a little bit of a cobweb system, throw it down on the ground because he's going to have like a little bungee, bungee cord system just in case he misses the bridge. You never know. He could probably miss the bridge. I doubt it though because he's a professional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down all these trees. I'm going to put a bunch of deep slate, uh, dripstone, and coarse dirt around here make it look like he absolutely trampled this part of the forest. You think I'd be able to dodge the leg, but I didn't. Anyways, that's where we're at right now, and hopefully we can finish off this whole build today in this episode. So, wish me luck. Well, we got the jumping spider done. His name's Francis. Check him out. This was probably the hardest spider I ever had to do. It's got a very dynamic pose of jumping over the gap here. Give you guys a little bit more of an aerial view. Kind of jumping across here. You can see that we got, like, the little bungee cord web over there. Uh, I'm going to get over towards this portal over here, too. And I'm going to make it look like spiders are starting to spill out of the portal. But notice how something might be missing. All of our maps have been officially moved inside of the castle here. So you can see the progression of week one to week two, three, four, five, and six of the entire project. And I've got all the new maps right here ready to go. I'm going to put it in the front of the castle. That way we can see exactly where we ended off on for this whole thing. So we're going to update our final map here. Hopefully I'm not messing this up. I might be messing this up. Am I messing this up? Okay, I'm not messing this up. This just looks crazy. So we got our first layer right there. Second layer. That looks really cool. And then we even got this guy up in here. And our final one right here of the actual castle. So this is the final map now. You can see where we have the, the daddy long leg right there. The back courtyard area. Sadly, none of the flowers really show up on the map. The orb weaver. The wolf spider right here. And the entirety of the garden going all the way around here with like the nice little pathway. And then we come out here. That's obviously where I'm standing. We have the jumping spider leaping across the gap over to the bridge and it's trampled its way through the entire forest here with its spider web. And we're going to be working a little bit more on the portal area, which is a little bit out of the actual range of it, but we're almost done. This is one more dynamic look at the jumping spider as it leaps its way across over here. And as we work our way around like the actual castle itself, I added more foliage. I already showed you guys the black widows that are coming out of like the little holes and stuff of like that kind of infesting this area. But here's the area that I didn't show you guys that has been completely trampled by the jumping spider pretty much working its way through here. Now, I know I only placed out a couple cobwebs, but believe me, I've got a lot of stuff planned for the other side of that portal when we connect it up to the nether hub. But... Without further ado, I think that concludes today's episode. I know today was a bit of a longer one, running about 40 minutes into today's episode. I just wanted to kind of bring everything together. I hope you guys all enjoyed the castle, the spiders, but I think it's about time that we pack up our shulker boxes. We move on to the next big ascension, which is going to be for Maddie, the majesty of mushrooms. And I've got a fantastic idea for that. If you guys haven't liked the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you haven't subscribed and you guys want to continue to follow along with some of these builds that we've got building up over here on Twitch, consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one.